the roller coaster ride continues for the Tennessee Volunteers. They reached an early high on September 28th when they knocked off number one Auburn 38 to 20 behind the arm of talented Tony Robinson. Then just three weeks later, a key Southeastern Conference victory over Alabama is tainted by the loss of Robinson, an injury that many thought would end Tennessee's Sugar Bowl dream. But the Volunteers have rallied around a tenacious, opportunistic defense and the surprising play of backup quarterback Daryl Dickey, who leads the league in completion percentage. But SEC foe Ole Miss may have something to say about Tennessee's Sugar Bowl plan. The Rebels' gritty defenders are drawing the battle lines in Knoxville. The conflict begins in just a few moments. Ole Miss versus Tennessee. Network Television presents Super Football Saturday. Today, a crucial SEC battle between the Ole Miss Rebels and the 17th-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. Brought to you by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet. By Gulf, the station with one low price, cash or credit. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee. It's a cloudy day, temperature right about 70, but looks like a good day for football between the Rebels of Ole Miss and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Neal along with Tim Foley. And, Tim, these Tennessee Volunteers with a 2-1 and record are in the driver's seat to go to the Sugar Bowl and win the SEC title if they can win all the way out, beating Ole Miss and Kentucky and Vanderbilt. Tennessee played Alabama in a game we televised and lost their great quarterback, Tony Robinson. A lot of people felt that Tennessee's hopes ended there, but Daryl Dickey stepped in at quarterback, and the Tennessee offense and defense have continued to roll. They've just done an excellent job. Dickey is the type of quarterback, of course, he's got that great football tradition, a uh, type of quarterback that won't do anything to beat you. He's, uh, they've redirected the offense, they've kind of cranked it down a little bit and fine-tuned it more towards Dickey's particular skills. But he's doing an excellent job. He's rated number four in the SEC, completing 63% of his passes, doing a great job of leadership, too. But I'll tell you who they're talking about here in Knoxville. They're talking about what they're calling the Rocky Stops. And the Rocky Stops means Tennessee defense, and what a year they're having. You know, you didn't hear much about the Tennessee defense before the season opened. They talked about Robinson, the air attack. But uh, Tennessee now leads the nation in turnover ratio. They're going to pressure Mississippi's offense. They're going to put the heat on them. And they've got people that can cover man-to-man -man and get away with doing it. And speaking of that old this offense. They lost their quarterback, Ken Austin, too, to a knee injury. May have found a young freshman, though, by the name of Chris Osgood, a true freshman from Moss Point, Mississippi. Played well last week against Notre Dame. Yes, he did. He came in in the second half against Notre Dame, but that's a lot different than starting a football game, and, and as we mentioned earlier, Tennessee is going to pressure that young man and see what he's made of. They'll try to confuse him with different looks, but the defense is the answer for Old Miss. If they're going to stay in this football game, their defense has got to carry this effort. And the punting game could play a role here. If it's a defensive game, Old Miss has a very good one in Bill Smith and basically untested punter for Tennessee and Bob Garman. We'll see how that plays a role in this game. We'll be back here to Neyland Stadium for the coin toss and the kickoff, but after these messages, we're going to continue Football Saturday at our studios in Atlanta. Super Football Saturday continues in studio with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. It's Tennessee against Old Miss with the SEC title on the line for Tennessee. Unfortunately, the two premier quarterbacks will be on the sidelines. And they will play in the game. Tennessee's defense is playing awfully well. Uh, they miss Tony Robinson, no question about it. But the defense is just playing, making up all the difference in the world. Tennessee in the driver's seat for the SEC title. They've only got three games remaining. Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Vandy, three easy teams. But they haven't beaten all three of these teams since 1978 in the same season. Another game we'll be keeping a close eye on is uh, Minnesota against Michigan. We'll be joining that game in progress at the conclusion of ours. We'll also have highlights throughout the afternoon. How do you see that one? The Big Ten, uh, just this is the time of year they just eliminate each other. Don't put anything past them when they're playing between the hedges up there. Georgia's dogs have uh, had a record of 33-3 and at home in the 80s under Vince Dooley. They're taking on Auburn after a big game last week against Florida. Well, they had a no-name uh, offense until you see this man right here. Keith Henderson bur burst the game open last week on runs and touchdown runs of 76 and 32 yards. He's established himself. They have three other backs that can do equally as well. Bo Jackson, of course, going for Auburn and, well, 1,500 yards rushing. He's due for a big day, day and he needs one. He spoiled us. He got 500 yards, six touchdowns in the first two games. We thought he was going to do that every 
week. Then when he had the injury with the thigh bruise, he set out part of Tennessee's game and Florida's. Does he have to do well today? To I think so. Game? I think he does, because I think sentiment is running in favor of the sports and sports fighters I've talked to in two states, three states now. They, they, they're tending toward, uh, leaning toward Chuck Long. He's coming on strong. Yes, he is. What about the bowl bids? They go out officially next week, but unofficially they go out today. I've scooped the bowl game that we're going to do over in Birmingham. The all -American yes, sir. It's going to be Georgia Tech in Minnesota. Does Bill Curry know this? No, he hadn't, I haven't told him yet. I'm going to call him after today's game. He has to beat Wake Forest today for possibly a share of the ACC title. Meanwhile, Lou Holtz has done a tremendous job in Minnesota, and we'll be looking at that game very closely And today. Ricky Foggy as well. Neyland Stadium, 93,000 expected here today under cloudy skies with a chance of 50% chance of rain. It rained a little bit this morning. The field has been covered, though, and is very dry. And there will be a full house, as there always is, here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the Tennessee Volunteers are bidding for their first SEC championship since 1969. And that was a year in which the Volunteers' lone regular season loss came at the hands of the Rebels from Ole Miss. The last time Tim Foley and I were in Neyland Stadium to telecast the game two years ago, Tennessee was heavily favored. And Billy Brewer's Ole Miss Rebels came up here and won a defensive game by a score of 13 to 10. And they are, of course, hoping to do that again today. On our opening, Tim, we talked about the Tennessee Volunteers and the way they've had to regroup since losing the great Tony Robinson. And it seems to have, in many ways, pulled the Tennessee Volunteer team together. They had a chance to buckle, but they've become very gritty. Timing is, a, I think, an important factor in, in any team concept. And early on, the offense was carrying the defense, as you see the old Miss Rebels come onto the field for Tennessee. And uh, during that point in time, the defense had a, had a time to assimilate some young players into their scheme of things, and, and they've built a lot of confidence. And now this team, in the last several games, the volunteers on the field have been winning with defense. They've cranked back their offense. They're not taking as many chances on offense. They're letting Dickey do what he could do well. He picks apart the opposing defenses with shorter passes. Today you might see something a little bit different as against this old Miss pressure defense, you may see Dickey trying to go longer a little bit more often than he has in the past. Well, he sure looks pumped up. You saw number 11 leading the team onto the field and jumping and getting them pumped up. We'll be ready for the coin toss and the kickoff when we return. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Yesterday, November 15, 1902 at Memphis, the Tennessee and Ole Miss first met on the football field for the first time, and the Vols won that game in an 11-10 squeaker. And they've been battling and having unusual games for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, it took Ole Miss 45 years and 20 games to finally beat the University of Tennessee, but then they beat them a whole lot of times in the mid-50s. And the last time, as we say, last year, it was Ole Miss uh, losing to Tennessee. And then two years ago, Ole Miss defeated the Volunteers. There's Dickey, and you're going to get a chance to see him early for Tennessee, the quarterback to replace Tony Robinson and son of the athletic director Doug Dickey here at UT, because Tennessee will receive and will be going from right to left, which is south to north here at Newland Stadium in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee, on the campus of the University of Tennessee. And the man in the white hat is the referee for the game. He is Al Ford. The other officials are Williams, Towns, Lorino, Delaney, Horton, and Diopolis. And we're ready to get this game underway. It looks like Joey Howard will be kicking off for Ole Miss. And University of Tennessee's Jeff Powell is deep at the goal line to return the kickoff. 17 is John Howard, a junior from Memphis. And there is 21, Jeff Powell. He's playing a little bit banged up, and he's back there to take this kickoff return in place of Pete Panuska, who normally returns kickoffs for Tennessee, but Panuska's had to start today due to the injured shoulder of starting tailback Keith Davis. This ball game is underway from Knoxville. Short and high, Powell at the five. To the 22-yard line, and from there, Tennessee will go on offense. Tennessee will be led on offense by Daryl Dickey, who, although he has not played a lot, is a mature young man. He is 24 years old and a 50-year senior from Gainesville, Florida. Pete Panuska will start at tailback in place of the injured Keith Davis. Henderson at fullback, Swanson and McGee at the receiving positions, both of them dangerous in different ways. The best offensive lineman for Tennessee is the right tackle, Bruce Wilkerson, the starting tight end, Jeff Smith, also Tim Hendricks will play some, too, for the Tennessee Volunteers. From the 21-yard line is where they spot the ball, and the Volunteers open this football game. Dickey throws to the right side. That's McGee. 
McGee in a lot of trouble back there. Struggles forward for a couple of yards. He was tripped up by 66, Jeff Harrod of Ole Miss, the strong side linebacker for Billy Brewer's squad. And let's look at that Ole Miss defensive alignment. Lopez Jones and Jay Webb are on the outside. Reed Portis and Fitzsimmons, and they are good down linemen for Ole Miss in the middle of that defensive line. Harrod and Huddleston will start at linebacker. Bubby Dick, Bubba Dickey, a freshman, will also play a lot there. Moore and Shelley on the outside. Flakes and Noblin are the safety. Shelley, perhaps the best defensive back for the Ole Miss Reds. For Tennessee, second down, eight. Here comes Panuska, and he gets only a yard or so to the 24-yard line, and Harad gets his second tackle of the day. And there is Pete Panuska. He's a junior from Brick, New Jersey, a surprise starter for Tennessee since the injury to the outstanding freshman Keith Davis. Here's a look at that Ole Miss defensive line. Number 83, you see number 83, Benton Reed, working against offensive linemen for Tennessee, and that's the kind of pursuit and hustle that we've always seen when we've watched old, the Ole Miss defense perform, and that's what they're going to have to have all afternoon this afternoon to keep their football team in the game. This is third down seven from the 24. Tennessee with double tight ends. Nickel defense for Ole Miss. Dickey to throw. A lot of time. Nobody to throw to. And down he goes at the 27-yard line. Benton Reed, number 83, will get credit for the tackle, tackle for the Ole Miss Rebels. And the Tennessee Vols go three downs and out, and in comes their punter, Bob Garman, number 41, a sophomore from Birmingham, who's replacing the great Jimmy Colquitt. He does get the punt off a little bit quicker. We'll probably see both of these punters a lot today. Both teams will probably be conservative, as Tim told you earlier. And it is Goodlow and Ambrose back about their own 28-yard line. Goodlow is number 24, Ambrose number 6. Garmin with a pretty good punt, not good hang time. That's Goodlow having problems, falls on it at the 30. Kind of a knuckleball punt. Ole Miss gets pretty good field position, though, at the 30-yard line, where they will go first down 10. And they will have a freshman quarterback, a true freshman, number 12, Chris Osgood, highly recruited out of Moss Point, Mississippi. Led the team to two late touchdowns against Notre Dame last week. Also different starters in the backfield. Wansley, normally a tailback, starts at fullback, and a freshman starts at tailback. Chimel Hoskins, Rayburn, Sheehan, Irvin, and Perry on the offensive line for Ole Miss. First and 10 from the Rebels, 30. Hit in the backfield, and down he goes, Sean Sykes. Mark Hovannik, number 59 for Tennessee with the stop. A loss on the play. The defensive line for Tennessee, Hovannik, Brown, and Scott. Scott coming back from an injury. Dale Jones, the big play man for Tennessee, number 54 at linebacker. They've got good linebackers as usual. This is almost linebacker U. Sims starting at quarterback for the first time since last year. Kramer at the other corner. Davis and White, the leading interceptor at the safety. Out to the 33-yard line comes Sean Sykes, hit by 45, Darren Miller. It'll bring up third down. And let's see exactly where they spot the ball at the 33. Let's call it third down nine. These are the kind of situations you'd love to stay out of with a freshman quarterback getting his first start. You'd like to give him the choice of runner pass so that defense can't tee off. In these situations, Tennessee usually likes to come after you. Ricky Myers, 25, came into the ball game at the flanker position. Looking for Ambrose, incomplete. As Chris Osgood throws his first pass, it goes incomplete on the Tennessee sideline. And Ambrose is a key player. When he catches the ball, Ole Miss moves. When he doesn't, they don't. The same, Ambrose performs the same, fills the same slot for Mississippi as Timmy McGee fills for Tennessee. You see him there working against Andre Kramer. They're going to try to get him the ball as much as they can. He's a big play performer. He can make big things happen anytime he has his hands on the football. Here's Bill Smith, junior punter. All-American candidate preseason, averaging 44.7. You see why. Kramer at the 8. And down at the 10-yard line, they may say his forward progress got him near the 11-yard line. That is the 24th punt this year that Bill Smith has punted inside the 20. That one a 59-yarder. This is Turner Network Television. So both these teams just sparring in the boxing ring right now, moving around, going on offense for the second time is Tennessee. Both offenses were three downs and out. Dickey has only one running back, double tight ends in there now. The running back is 43, Sam Henderson's first down from the 11. He gets the ball. I think Sam Henderson gets it out to about the 18-yard line before he's hit by Michael Portis, number 60, the nose guard for Ole Miss. Michael Portis doesn't play in the nickelback situations, but when he's in there, number 60 is a definite force in the middle of the line for Ole Miss. 
He covers a lot of ground. Great two-gap technique. He keeps the offensive lineman off his feet. Keeps that offensive lineman's head pointed down. When it's time to make the tackle, just unloads him and go to the, goes to the ball. Good job by Michael Portis. Now this time for Tennessee, three wideouts, one tight end, one back. Toss it to the outside. Tennessee close to the first down. They're going to spot the ball at the 25-yard line. Joe Nathan Shelley covering Eric Swanson. It'll be about a half a yard short of the first down over at the 25. And this is the type of sequence that you're going to see pretty much from Tennessee. Run the ball, the good mixture on first down, a little play action, and then short passes, short effective passes, until they get Mississippi in a blitz situation, then they might try to go over the top. Three tight ends for Tennessee. They give it to 43, Sam Henderson. He takes his 260 pounds and gets the UT first down as he drives the ball out here near the 29-yard line. There's a couple of things, Bob, that can happen when you lose a player like Tony Robinson. You're always, I, I think that uh, Johnny Major said it was like having a death in the family that next week of practice, and, and so you're always going to have a little bit of a letdown, but then one of two things can happen. The team can fall apart, or something like that, a major catastrophe can bring a, crew, a group of kids closer together, and that's what happens for Tennessee. First down 10 from the 29-yard line. Volunteers after their first first down. Play fake, and Dickey rolls the throw. Has a man open. It's complete to the tight end. And knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Ole Miss is 81 Jeff Smith, who is tackled by 35 Jeff Noblin. Tennessee penetrating Ole Miss territory. You see all the rain gear. That's because the rain is going to come down sometime today. Jeff Smith hasn't really been a big part of the uh, Tennessee passing attack. He made a big catch against Auburn in a drive early in the first half, but they haven't heard a lot from him lately. They may go to him more in this Mississippi against this Mississippi defense because of the blitz. Tennessee now with the two backs, Paduska and Howard. 35 is Howard. This is Paduska. And Panuska gets inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. We mentioned the redshirt freshman and Tennessee's leading ground gainer, Keith Davis, hurt with a shoulder injury. He is suited up today and could play. But, of course, Tennessee, with three SEC games left, counting this one, want to keep Keith Davis healthy. They would like to be able to rest him today if they can move the ball without him. Last year, Tennessee, of course, lost to Kentucky. This year, they have to go play him in Lexington. They'd like to be as healthy as they can going into that game. Second down eight, Dickey. Incomplete. Benton Reed tipped it, number 83. The throw, that, it's that quick pass, quick set back into the sideline, away from the strength of the coverage. They've got man-to-man -man coverage down on the uh, short side of the field. Nice play by Benton Reed, getting his hand up, picking that ball out of the sky. Steve Ahn Moore in good shape on Eric Swanson on that particular pattern. It'll be third down eight. They spot the ball at the 43 and a half yard line of Ole Miss. We're early in the ball game from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. 10.04 to go, quarter number one. You see that Ole Miss leads the conference in pass defense. They are last in rushing defense, though, so that's a misleading statistic. Dickey going long for his tight end, almost picked off right through the hands of Howard Moss, number 38, the nickelback intended for Jeff Smith. Moss should have had that, probably. I'm sure he would agree. And Garmin comes in to punt for the second time today for UT. Mississippi in their nickelback setup uses six defensive backs. Often they'll blitz from that setup. That time they, as you see, they played a zone. Howard Moss back in the deep flat area and knocked it out of the sky. Ole Miss with twin safety, Goodlow and Ambrose. Garmin with one of those boot kicks. He's going to make it uh, force a fair catch at the 13-yard line by J.R. Ambrose. So now Ole Miss will have to start with bad field position. Only a 29-yard punt, but very effective. We'll be right back. So Tennessee had to start their drive at just outside their 15-yard line, and now Ole Miss having to start their drive inside the 15-yard line. About four yards out to the 19 goes Nathan Wansley. Normally a tailback playing fullback today for Ole Miss. He's a little guy, 5'9", 185, a senior from Moss Point. And there's Johnny Majors. He had 200 yards against Ole Miss during his playing career here at UT, passing and running the ball one year. I think John sometimes performs better under adversity, and that's one of the things that he talks about. His team has certainly faced it this year. On second down four, Wansley. Tripped up at the line, ran into the back of his own player, 61, Danny Hoskins. And they'll spot the ball back at the 20-yard line. 
as you remember, we watched Mississippi uh, for a, uh, Billy Brewer's first year, and this year he opened up the offense with Ken Austin uh, against Mississippi State. He opened it up last year. Uh, I think what you're going to see is a lot more conservative style. Don't make a mistake. Don't do anything on offense to contribute to a defeat. Wansley on third down four. First down Ole Miss. Out across the 25 to the 27-yard line, Charles Davis with the tackle for Tennessee. Osgood is 0 for 1. Dickey 3 for 5. So Ole Miss keeping that ball on the ground. Third and six situation, a nice safe, safe call. Tennessee gets caught in a stunt. Charles Davis hangs on to make the stop, but uh, that conservative play calling is something that probably will develop throughout the game. At the 26-yard line, first down Ole Miss. Scoreless ball game, 8.33 to go, quarter number one. Nothing going this time. Richard Cooper wraps up Nathan Wansley. Cooper at 6'6", 275, number 77. <laughs> they love him here. You hear that in the background, Coop. This, I think that uh, the defense of Tennessee gets a lot more uh, applause and creates a lot more excitement than last so far this game, but more than the offense. There's the young freshman, true freshman, Chris Osgood from Moss Point, Mississippi. They were trying to redshirt him, but called him into duty. Wansley, close to the first down. He was slung down by freshman Brian Kimbrough. And let's see, they say he did get the first down over there. Just past the stick on the far sideline. So Ole Miss will move that ball up here to the 36-yard line. Mississippi is showing him a little too tight end offense. Two tight ends, two flankers. Why do you do that? It makes it a lot easier for a freshman quarterback to read the strength of the defense. A defense has to declare a lot earlier. Makes it easier for, for uh, Osgood to see what's going on. First down 10. Holder and Rogers, the receivers in there now for Ole Miss. They hand it off again out to the 40-yard line. Chris White with his first tackle of the day on Nathan Wansley. And Wansley is going to just be the workhorse, no question about that. That's his sixth carry already this afternoon. They'd love to do this all afternoon. What's happening here is they're keeping their defense off the field. Mississippi defense, although enthusiastic and aggressive, is not very big. And one of the concerns that Billy Brewer has to have is that as the game wears on, his smaller players get beat up a little bit. Second down seven, just inside the 40. Here comes Wansley again. Only a couple knocked out of bounds as the ball came loose, but he went out of bounds. Kelly Ziegler with the tackle. Ziegler is sophomore from Miami, Florida, number 49, one of the fine inside linebackers for Tennessee. <laughs> I was talk talking to him yesterday, Bob, and, and he said that uh, Kelly Ziegler, that I talked at one of his football banquets, and I was, I was worried he was going to say his, you know, sixth grade football banquet. <laughs> but thank goodness it was a high school banquet at Palmetto High School. All right, a third down conversion situation for Ole Miss. It's third down four at the 43. Volunteer fans cheering on this defensive unit. Here comes Wansley. He's hit at the 45 and does not get the first down. It was Kelly Ziegler with the tackle, and that's his third of the afternoon. He's their leading tackler. He gets around the football. He and Dale Jones. Well, as you mentioned, that whole group of linebackers, Miller and Kimbrough, Jones and Ziegler, they're very mobile. They get to the football. So Kramer will go back to take the punt for the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Kramer averages 5.9 yards per punt return. Bill Smith, though, can punt him as long as 94 yards, as you see there, holds the record in the SEC. Had a 59-yarder last time out. They're going after it. The ball is loose. Tennessee ball at the 38. The Volunteers were all over Smith. I think it was Chris White, number seven, who hit him. There's the man, Chris White. Tennessee that said they were going to try to pressure the punter, try to shake Smith a little bit, and they're all over him. He didn't. He, they they got to him before his foot even got to the ball. Watch on the right side, Chris White coming underneath, a fifth-year senior that has just really come to life this year. Hadn't played much coming into this season. Already has six interceptions. Now a blocked punt. Oh, the big turnover. Remember, Tennessee leads the nation in causing turnover. That's number 43, Henderson. He doesn't get much against that Ole Miss defensive line. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage, but Tennessee with excellent field position and a good opportunity. It's a scoreless game. 6.05 to go, quarter number one. I think that was Bubba Dickey that put the hat on him, wasn't it? And uh, 
we saw him get his first SEC experience against LSU. I think he made three tackles out of the first five plays, and he stopped Sam Henderson right in his tracks in that one. Second down nine, volunteers. Dickey, near side. It's complete, and down to the 28-yard line goes Tim McGee, a 10-yard pass reception for the senior wide receiver one of the only all-star candidates on the offensive old, uh, Tennessee team. Good looking play. The slot man is picking off the first defensive back from the inside. By the time McGee gets the ball and heads up field, he has a couple of offensive linemen out in front to lead the way. Mississippi is going to have to get somebody up in McGee's face a lot quicker. 27 and a half yard line. It's near side hash mark. First down and penalty markers go down at the line of scrimmage. As you see the Ole Miss offensive line over there. And it's illegal procedure against the Volunteers, and they'll move it back five yards. First penalty of this game. And here's Al Ford, the referee. Ball foul. Ball start, offense, till first down. Sometimes when that center sets the ball, he can lift it up, move it around, but once he sets it, then he's got to leave it set. And sometimes if they try to twist it around to get the laces right again, of course that flag will whip out of the pocket could have been what happens we have 87 clink scales splitting wide to the right side 27 Eric Swanson splitting wide to the left side for Tennessee on first down 15 from the 32 yard line now Panuska gets back most of the five yard penalty but that's all Bubba Dickey with the tackle again and since Huddleston started the game at that inside linebacker, the weak side linebacker spot, Dickey came in, and as you mentioned, Tim, Dickey has been doing a good job there. Here you saw Ron Zook, the uh, secondary coach, talking to, his, uh, talking to his players, trying to get them ready for the next time on the field. Second down 10, Tennessee. Swanson McGee, the wideouts now. Single setback is William Howard. Dickey, four out of six for 44 yards, throwing the ball so far. He's going to put it in the air again. Looking into the end zone, has his man over, threw him. He was looking for the tight end, Jeff Smith, who was open at the goal line, covered by Joe Nathan Shelley. Jeff Smith had it on the outside. They were playing that defense, Bob, where they hang the weak safety short. Not all the way back in the deep middle, but he plays almost like a middle linebacker on a two-deep zone. Smith had done a nice job finding the seam to the outside and, and had a little bit of room on Jeff Noblin. The ball is slightly overthrown. Ole Miss in their nickel defense now on third down 10 from the 27-yard line. Three-man rush. Almost picked off, but it was caught by McGee. To the five. Stevon Moore almost picked it off. Number 27 for Ole Miss, but almost only counts in horseshoes. We're going to watch Mississippi secondary here. This is a big play by McGee. Stevon Moore, it's kind of a blitz situation playing man-to-man -man short. Breaks on the football. Almost intercepts it. Goes the other way. Good, good concentration on the ball by Timmy McGee. You see, you saw Stevon Moore slide to the inside. He was covering McGee man-to-man. -man, did not really have good vision on the ball. First and goal from the five. Three tight ends. They give it to the big man, Henderson, who gets a couple down to the three-yard line. But Simmons stops him there. Tim McGee, by the way, the receiver who just caught that ball, now has 107 career receptions, putting him second on the all-time Tennessee receiving list. He trails only all-star leader, all-time leader, Larry Sievers, who tonight played back in 74, 75, 76. So McGee now moves into number two for Tennessee. Second down goal from the two. Good view for you here. There goes Henderson. Touchdown! by the right side of the Tennessee line. You see Boyce trying to come in there. He got picked off by a Tennessee running back, and Henderson just powers himself in. But obviously the big play in that scoring drive and is uh, the catch by Timmy McGee. Here's Ravaze, who's now 20 out of 20 for point after touchdowns on the year. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. 
Well, thanks to an excellent punt situation for Tennessee, the punt was blocked. They're going to say it was blocked, and that is the, the uh, official ruling on it, even though I don't know the ball was hit by Chris White. But he rushed in on Bill Smith. And Tennessee took it over 38 yards out, moved it in in only seven plays, and they now lead seven to nothing. But it was Chris White with the punt block that made the key play there for UT. Here's Reves with a squib kick. Coming down to good low. Ran into his own man, gets out near the 25. They'll spot it at the 24-yard line. And Ole Miss trails now, 7-0, with 3.09 to go, quarter number one. Chris White just came clean on that punt block, too, Bob. And sometimes people wonder how that can happen. It, didn't he have a man assigned to him? And the answer is, of course, yes, he had a man assigned to him. But all year long, you're blocking your man, then trying to get downfield and make the tackle. What's paramount in your mind is to get down the field and make the tackle when the guy catches the punt. And sometimes you... You overlook the primary job of blocking someone. First down 10. Plenty of time to throw for Osgood. This is what he does quite well. He goes down at the 31-yard line, scrambles for about five. Cooper with the tackle. Coming into this ballgame, Osgood had rushed the ball eight times last week against Notre Dame for 23 yards. He literally is an offensive player in the backfield. He's not, not a scrambler avoiding a sack. He'll actually run the ball on you. That is a legitimate option, and I'm not sure if it's run first or pass first really and uh, he's a lot like terrence jones a young man that's uh, playing some quarterback for tulane now nine straight running plays for ole miss make it 10. first down out to the 41 yard line sean sykes a red shirt freshman also from west point mississippi west point and moss point have been good to ole miss in delivering quality football players Good movement here by the uh, offensive line of Mississippi and a nice job of running by Sean Sykes. Look at that balance. He stretches that leg out there, regains his balance, and pops off another six or seven yards. Fine run. Ole Miss without a tight end now. They have three wideouts and two backs in the game on first down 10. J.R. Ambrose is open, makes the reception, juggles it. It'll be incomplete at the 48-yard line. Never controlled the ball. J.R. Ambrose, uh, in my opinion, even though he's the leading receiver, the sophomore, Tim, I think is a little bit inconsistent. He doesn't deliver the catches he needs to on a game-by-game -game basis. Well, what makes it more difficult, and I can see how you'd feel that way looking at the statistics, but I think what makes it more difficult, Bob, is the fact that they really have nothing else going on. I mean, there is no other threat. There's nothing else that's drawing attention away from Ambrose. If they can keep running like this, though, it's going to be great for him. Second down, 10. Osgood, plenty of time. Doesn't see anybody. Finally throws it, attempts to throw it to the safety valve, Nathan Wansley, and throws it a little too hard. Good secondary coverage by this Tennessee defensive unit. And Billy Brewer's going to have to find a way to solve the Tennessee defense, and virtually nobody's been able to do that. Only, Florida only scored 17 points on, on UT. Been playing well defensively all year long, and what you saw there is what you usually see from a young quarterback. He wanted the tight end early. Tennessee linebackers did a nice job of taking the tight end away. Most young quarterbacks have a difficult time going to that secondary receiver. And as a result, he just started moving his feet and started to squirm out of the pocket. Third down 10 from the 41-yard line of the Rebels. Osgood with pressure. Look at how quick he is. Whoa! Not quick enough to avoid that at the 28, Brian Kimbrough, number 55. The pressure came from 77, Cooper. But just as Osgood got out of the frying pan, he runs into the fire. Darren Miller was Brit Blitzen. Cooper was up the gut. <laughs> he, oh. he's, I'm surrounded, Mom. <laughs> tried, to, tried to get away with it out the back door, and there was somebody waiting. We'll call him Chris Custer on that one. <laughs> Osgood loses 12 on the sack by Brian Kimbrough, an excellent, aggressive UT defense. They've got 10 lined up at the line again. They blocked the last punt attempt by Bill Smith. Here they come again. Smith gets this one away. It's a cannon shot. Kramer at the 19. And down he goes at the 24. Excellent punt coverage by Ole Miss. Remember, they tried to block it with 10 and then got back to cover well. Butch Davenport, 28, with the stop. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. 115 to go quarter number one. UT7. So Daryl Dickey comes out of the ball game for Tennessee, despite leading them down the field at 5 out of 8 for 66 yards and a nice reception to McGee. And in comes freshman Jeff Francis. The 7 out of 10 came against Rutgers. Here's Francis, freshman from Mount Prospect, Illinois. 
incomplete. That should have been caught by William Howard. Francis is 6'3", 200 pounds. He has one interception. No touchdowns. Excuse me, no interceptions or no touchdowns. Longest pass he's thrown 45-yard completion against Rutgers, as I say, and he's just a youngster from the state of Illinois. John Majors just trying to get some backup experience in case something would happen to Dickey. You want, you want your backup quarterback to have taken some snaps in a game that isn't, has not been decided yet. Second down 10 from the 24. Francis with a screen set up very well. Only a gain of about six yards, though. William Howard with the reception. Harrod with the tackle. Howard out to the 31-yard line. Make it the 32. Let's see where they spot it. Now they move it back to the 31. Kind of a double screen John Majors had set up in that play. Walt Harris up in the booth, offensive coordinator and uh, quarterback mentor, calling the plays from up in the booth. He's been instrumental in bringing Dickey as long, along as fast as he has, and of course, a, a teacher for Tony Robinson. Troy Hale, Sam Grady, the receivers in there for UT right now. This may be the final play of this quarter. Let's see if Francis can get it off in time after calling the audible. He does. He decides to give it to Henderson. First down and more for the 260-pounder. Now that's the way Henderson ran when he was a freshman before his knee injury. Frankly, he's been running tenderly since then. He said in the papers here in Knoxville this week, I feel well again for the first time. You see how strong he is at 260. You're going to see him go nose to nose with Fuzzy Huddleston here. Fuzzy Huddleston gets rid of the block and then pow. Nice job there. Defensively, at that point, you should have some other helmets coming in and hitting that running back. But Mississippi had no one there to help old Fuzzy. He took him out of bounds. Gain of a couple on the play near the 40-yard line. It's William Howard, 35, playing there. Howard and Henderson are in the backfield at the same time. Henderson normally a fullback. <laughs> Today, though, playing some at tailback. That's the end of the first quarter. Dickey's not playing, by the way, because just because they want to get some time on the other quarterbacks. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. We go to second down eight. First play of the second quarter. The ball at the 39-yard line. Nealon Stadium, Knoxville. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. Tennessee leading seven to nothing. Here is freshman Jeff Francis. All day to throw. Runs out of the pocket. Needs a block. And his man out there on that side, number 63, Phil Stewart, never did see the man he needed to block, so not much gain on the play. Harrod and Fitzsimmons with a tackle. Tim, once again, talk a little bit more about why Tennessee would go away from Dickey and to Francis at this point in the game as you look at those first quarter stats. Well, so often the only time you use a backup quarterback is when the game's over. They're not used to playing under pressure. And another reason that Johnny Majors can get away with it, or he feels he can get away with it, is because he's got such a strong defense. He doesn't feel like he's going to lose any ground anyway. Now it's third down eight from the 39-yard line. Francis, it is complete. Short of the first down at the 45-yard line. And driven out of bounds is Tim McGee. That's McGee's fourth catch of the afternoon. And Tennessee will have to turn the ball over again. And Bob Carmen comes into play. The Ole Miss could end up with some decent field position here, depending on the effectiveness of this Garmin punt. Good low and Ambrose in there to take the punt. In order to win this football game, Mississippi has got to make some big plays somewhere along the line. They won't consistently drive the ball down the field on this Tennessee defense. They're going to have to rip off some long gains through the air on the ground, block some punts, or do something. Not a very good punt. It is taken by Goodlow. Oh, he is hit hard at the 25-yard line. I don't know by who, but somebody really popped him down there. That's where... Ole Miss will set up their offense. Goodlow getting those cobwebs out. We'll be right back. Of Ole Miss made the hit here, Tim. And times, uh, when well, you've got your man picked out, you develop tunnel vision and oh. boom. <laughs> Willie says, not me, Lester. <laughs> I think they just offered Brinkley an orange jersey. <laughs> Lester, would you like to play on our punt coverage team? A nice hit. First down 10, Ole Miss from the 25. Continuing to run the ball out to about the 28-yard line goes Nathan Wansley. And Wansley is just carrying it over and over again nine times now in a quarter and just a little more. Teams develop personalities, Bob. Offenses develop personalities like uh, uh, 
you get used to Ohio State's used to running the football they, they can move the ball down the field patiently Auburn is the same way that some teams can't stand to run the ball more than four or five times they got to get it in the air Osgood's gonna put it in the air boy he rifles it it's complete to the tight end Mario Perry out here close to a first down they're gonna spot it at the 35 and it'll depend on the angle of the official's foot as to whether or not that's a first down pass Osgood can wing it what an arm yes he can and as, as we watch this again the point that I was trying to make is that this Mississippi team has been a pass oriented football team up until the uh, injury to Ken Austin now they're gonna have to kind of re-gear and get used to grinding things out down the field looks like uh, Mario Perry is going to be a target for Osgood all day long he'll try to seek that open area between the zones and Osgood will get it to him in a hurry 12 51 to go first half Tennessee 7 Mississippi nothing first down 10 Ole Miss Rebels here's Osgood he's got a lot of running room dives forward loses the ball Turf, and they're going to say that the ball will be spotted at the 43 and remain in the possession of Ole Miss, an eight-yard gain. When he's getting into a diving form there, it looked like his knees were down by the time he'd lost the ball, but you got to cover that rascal up, Chris. Guess who covered it? Watch for 54. <laughs> the for ball Tennessee. is down and now comes out. Good call by the referee. And Dale Jones. I think Dale Jones has got a magnet in his body that attracts leather. <laughs> Second down two. Here comes Wansley. First down running hard. He fumbles. Ole Miss falls on it. And that was a fumble recovered by Ole Miss at the 44. Michael Smith fell on it, who was downfield blocking. To be honest with you, I didn't think Mississippi would able to be able to move the ball at all on Tennessee on the ground. Charlie Davis knocks the ball out. And Fortunately for Mississippi, Michael Smith is there. It's a first down. They spot the ball just inside the 45-yard line. Tennessee leading 7-0. After Chris White blocked the Bill Smith punt, McGee caught a key reception at the 5. Two plays later, Henderson took it in for Tennessee. They're going to run it again. Only a couple of yards this time to the 43. Richard Cooper with the stop. They're unpiling down there. They tried to trap Mark Havanek on that play. And Vanek just stuffed it. But he's been a dominating force in the Tennessee uh, uh, defensive line. Bunch of sacks, just played real well. 11-12 to go, first half, second down eight. Sean Sykes and Nathan Wansley, the running backs in there. For Ole Miss. 13 quarters now, the Tennessee defense has not given up a touchdown. Oh, but they're knocking on the door. It is complete to Sykes out of the backfield. First down Ole Miss to the 13-yard line. You can't throw the ball any better than Chris Osgood does here. They're playing against a two-deep zone, kind of a robber setup, Holt set up back in, in the beginning there. I mean, excuse me, Chris White dives for the ball. The ball is perfectly thrown. Bango. Dale Jones. Dale Jones, never, never far from the ball lays it on Chris Osgood. He didn't see that completion, but what a throw by Chris Osgood. Holder, Ambrose of the receivers. First and 10 at the 18. They give it to Wansley to the nine-yard line. Nathan Wansley running hard. Ziegler with the tackle. And Ole Miss has moved this ball down the field effectively on this drive. 58 yards now for Wansley. Very confident and poised play coming from Chris Osgood. Surprising. Uh, as, as a freshman, you, when you get in your, he had already had his mind set on being redshirted this year and was just kind of, I'm sure, going through the motions, uh, running the scout team, and all of a sudden he finds himself starting against Tennessee in front of 93,000 people. Second down two, Wansley. First down to the six yard line, Nathan Wansley. Jones with a tackle. The Ole Miss will have it first and goal just outside the five. Trailing Tennessee, seven nothing. 9.45 to go. Quarter number one, and Billy Brewer's got this offense clicking for Ole Miss. They were trailing. They were being shut out by Notre Dame last week until they inserted Chris Osgood at quarterback, and Osgood directed one drive and uh, for a touchdown and then threw a touchdown pass to Ricky Myers on the next drive. First and goal from the six. 
Sykes to the one-yard line. Darren Miller with a stop for Tennessee. Second and goal, and it's inside the one-yard line. Well, they call him lightning in high school, and you're going to see why here. Look at this direction change. Pow. Cuts it back and gets back underneath Darren Miller and almost took it into the end zone. Ole Miss threatening to tie this ball game for 13 quarters and seven minutes. Tennessee as defense has not allowed a touchdown. Sykes. Look at that effort. Touchdown. One thing that always scares you when you get down close is the back running laterally. That's the way you want the back to go. But Sykes ducks underneath the tackle, breaks the tackle of Jones and Miller, and takes it into the end zone. He runs with a lot of power for a, for a young man his size. 75-yard drive. Brian Owen, the freshman, with the point after attempt here. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard 93,000 people any quieter. They are, in fact. This game is tied 7-7. 46 remaining in the second quarter. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. So Sean Sykes, number 46, the freshman with the touchdown run for Ole Miss. The Tennessee defensive line does his job, gets the back running sideways, but then Sean Sykes does his job and fights his way into the end zone. His knee hits, falls into the end zone. It's a touchdown. That's his first ever collegiate touchdown as John Howard kicks this thing out of the end zone. And Ole Miss nails Tennessee for a touchback, and the balls bring it out to the 20-yard line. 75-yard drive. That 26-yard pass to Sykes set up the touchdown, so it's only fitting that Sykes would carry the ball into the end zone. The freshman having a good game at tailback. Remember Nathan Wansley, normally the tailback for Ole Miss, playing fullback today. We've got a tie ball game. Tennessee needs to beat Ole Miss, needs to beat Kentucky, and then Vanderbilt to win the Southeastern Conference. And, and uh, Johnny Major says that's enough experience for Jeff Francis. Let's get Doug Dickey back into the game. Well, my question earlier, I just makes you wonder. And he Whoa. fumbles the ball. I know I sound like I'm feeding a, a riding a, a, a tired horse here, but you run a guy in and out like that, I think you, you might have those kind of problems. You might, uh, you're talking about breaking his momentum, yes. breaking his stride. I think that uh, you might be right if it wasn't a fifth-year guy like Doug Dickey, who isn't really used to playing a lot. And, but it, it'll be, I, I'll guarantee you, that there'll be some questions about that if Tennessee doesn't come out on top in this football game as you watch Robert McGraw talking to his offensive lines for Mississippi. Got to be proud of those guys. Second down, 12, Tennessee. Dickey, plenty of time to throw. Can he find anybody? Not yet. Dickey going for a few yards. He gets back uh, about half of them. He goes to the 26-yard line. Jay Webb with the stop. An eight-yard gain for Daryl Dickey. So now a big conversion situation coming up for the Volunteers. Tied 7-7. That time he was looking for Timmy McGee deep. Timmy McGee working on Stevon Moore. Watch this. He's going to give him a little move to the inside or outside, and then boom, up the field. Now he's got him beat. The problem at that point is that I think he was out of Dickey's range throwing the ball into the wind, so Dickey just decided to run it out of there. Dickey wings it over to the side. It is complete for the first down to 27, Eric Swanson. Eric Swanson at 5'11", 185, gets very little publicity on this team. But according to Johnny Majors, professional football scouts are down here looking at number 27 all the time. They like him. He blocks well. He catches the key passes, and he's a good possession receiver, as you saw right there. And he's a vicious blocker. He's kind of a Jeff Groth, uh, Howard Twilley type of receiver, and, and uh, he just he'll throw throw his body around. First down, ten from the 31-yard line. Tennessee and Ole Miss tied 7-7, seven, 7:24 seven, seven to go. First half. Dickey taking it upstairs. That's McGee under throw. by McGee at the 24. Timmy McGee working on Joe Nathan Shelley. So often you'll see this happen. Shelley in great shape, but McGee, uh, McGee more used to making the reception as we watch it from another angle. Out position Shelley for the ball. And at this point, if you're a defensive back, you think, don't touch him, don't get a flag, don't let anything like that happen. And sometimes 
it takes away some of your aggressiveness in terms of going for the football. Nice body positioning by Tim McGee. 45-yard reception. Here's a pitch to Henderson. The big tailback that they stop him at the line of scrimmage. You know, because of the NCAA rules this year on pass interference, I think I might coach my uh, defensive back on a long 45-yard possible gainer to go ahead and interfere. It's only a 15-yard penalty. No question about it. I think that if, you, if you're beat or if you've been set up, somebody's running a turn and go or out and up on you, and I'd grab that, <laughs> grab that guy. I'd rather have it move 10 yards down the field than have the probability of a 70-yarder being completed. This will be second down. Actually, they've moved the ball back outside the 10. A little bit of a loss on the play. So second and a long 10 now for Tennessee. Passing formation. Dickey. Incomplete. Intended for McGee near the first down marker at about the 14-yard line. McGee has five catches, 85 yards on the day. McGee working here on the weak side of his zone. You're going to see number 42, Everett Flakes, sliding out underneath. There's somebody back there behind it. Kind of a dangerous throw, I thought. I didn't think the ball was going to be thrown out there, but Dickey stuck it in there right on the sideline, low into the outside, and that's where you want to throw that sideline pattern. Well, here's a big play. Third down 11 at the 25, just outside the 25. Tie game 7-7. You can count on Mississippi coming. Here they come. And here they do. And so Tennessee runs the ball. They hand it to 21. Powell, he gets nowhere. Line of scrimmage. Boo Birds come out here at Neyland Stadium. Noblin with the tackle. And here come the field goal team members. And Carlos Raves, Tennessee's kicker, a junior from Miami. Yes, he is the brother of Fuad, who's now with the Miami Dolphins. And Raves is really the front runner for all-conference kicker now. He's six out of seven from this distance between the 40 and 49. 17 out of 21 on the year. It looks good. It's perfect. Reves gives Tennessee the lead. 10-7 with 5.30 to go. Quarter number two from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Weekend's games, the 10 schools of the Southeastern Conference have compiled a 33-6-4 record versus non-conference opponents, a winning mark of 81%. In the past three years, 19 SEC teams have seen postseason play. Another example of the strength of the Southeastern Conference. So Tennessee has taken the lead here by a score of 10-7 on a 43-yard Carlos Reves field goal. Eight-pay play drive that was really the key play was that reception by McGee. Here comes Goodloe. He almost got through that gauntlet down at the 25-yard line. He was brought down by 39 Tim Welch, a senior from Knoxville. And now we're going to go back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. Michigan and Minnesota are playing for the Little Brown Jug. What's the latest? And the biggest of the Big Ten games, Michigan uh, quarterback Jim Harbaugh throws a little checkoff pass to Jamie Morris. Look at the excellent blocking he's setting up right here. He takes it 35 yards down the field before Gerald White takes it over from the one. Michigan goes up on Minnesota, 7 0. To giving to Wansley. Wansley with only a couple of yards as this Tennessee crowd has come to life following the field goal and the Tennessee lead. Hovannik with the stop, number 59, the defensive right tackle. That's a good thing we don't do Big Ten games. <laughs> I just want you folks to know that Neil was back here signaling touchdown for Go Blue Michigan. Well, I just felt it in my bones. You know, I could see that it was about to develop there. By the way, we'll have updates on that very important game in regard to possibly even the Sugar Bowl with Michigan, Iowa, Ohio State all being potential Sugar Bowl candidates. We'll give you highlights of that all afternoon. Scores of all the action. What a nice throw by Osgood. But it's in complete intended for Andre Rogers at the 41. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, Jamie Holder. Watch this poise displayed by Chris Osgood. And here's what scares you as a defensive coordinator. Look at that athletic ability. Comes around, tries to get at the holder across the middle, and Andre Kramer extends his body, makes a beautiful play. So that'll bring up third down. Third down eight, 440 to go, second quarter. Tennessee 10, Ole Miss seven. Ole Miss showing some spunk here, though. You can see they haven't got many yards passing. Tennessee's a couple of long gainers. Osgood under a lot of pressure. Penalty markers down. 
Pass intended for Sykes, but two Tennessee players, Dale Jones was back there, along with Brian Kembro. It may go against and does Ole Miss holding. Tennessee will de decline the penalty, and Miss Mississippi will be in a pun punting situation again. Here comes Bill Smith in again. He had a 59-yarder, a 52-yarder. Of course, in between, he had a blocked punt. Very slow getting the ball away. It looks that way to me, Tim. Very, very deliberate. It's, uh, it's like the guy going to try to lift a lot of weight. You know, it takes a lot of time. And uh, <laughs> Tennessee made him pay for it once. Tennessee has 10 men at the line, now dropping one off. Pretty good punt here. It's going to hang up there. Kramer at his 24. Down to the 43-yard line goes Andre Kramer. Frank Porter, number 15, with a stop. That was a 49-yard punt and a 19-yard return. This is Turner Network Television. Quarterbacks continue. Back comes Jeff Francis, who had played only about 10 minutes prior to this game. Dickey led the balls down for the field goal. Now Francis comes back in. The freshman from Mount Prospect, Illinois, in the Chicago area, on the first down. It's complete to Swanson. He goes out of bounds at the 49-yard line of Ole Miss, a gain of seven. See, Bob, we just look at it as one game. We look at it as one season. I think Johnny Majors is probably looking at it more for next year than anything else. You know, he's got to he's got to line up in this league and play ten next year, and you'd hate to do it with a quarterback that hasn't played much. On second down now, long two. Tennessee, Francis, another audible. Three wideouts in there for UT on this over the middle wide. Is Tim McGee first down 37 yard line tackled by Fuzzy Huddleston I like this young man Jeff Francis in terms of uh, the arm he can rifle it they're leaving the slot totally uncovered a nice read flakes was set up moved on the outside guy whatever it flakes was thinking of course was a screen to the flanker that they'd run so effectively Francis sat right in there watched flakes run through the slot and popped him uh, McGee with the ball McGee, 1,835 yards, number two in the history of Tennessee. A lot of people call this wide receiver you. Hand off Powell. Penalty markers down. Powell struggles out here. They're going to say he got to the 31-yard line, 32, before he went down. But a penalty marker in the Tennessee backfield. 3.43 remaining in the second quarter. Tennessee leading 10-7. Tennessee, hopefully on the way to the Sugar Bowl. Ole Miss trying to provide the roadblock. Face mask Ole Miss. Oh, they'll tack that on. And it'll be a first down. And the severity of it, depending on whether the official thinks it was flagrant or not, probably not flagrant. That's right, five yards, first down for the 26 and a half. Here's Al Ford. An incidental face mask against the defense. Five yards, first down. So Tennessee gets the first down on that call, and this freshman quarterback, only 19 years old, Jeff Francis, he came in here locked in a three-way battle for the number three quarterback position when this season started. Play fake. He's going to run it. Not going to run it very far, though. 71, Michael Fitzsimmons levels young Jeff Francis. There you see the time remaining in the first half. Penalty marker is down. You can see it on the field on the right side of your screen there. Personal foul, Ole Miss. Oh, that'll be a big one. So two consecutive penalties aiding Tennessee on this drive. Fitz Simmons asking about the uh, the call. I, I'm not sure what happened on that one, Bob. Did you see anything? I did not see anything. There was a there was, however, a big rise from the crowd. Look at this. Down to the 14 yard line. Here's Al Ford in the announcement. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. First down. Now let's see if we can find out what it was. Francis scrambling with the football. There you see Benton Reed trying to work his way back into it, and Mike Fitzsimmons 
Makes the stop. Down on the ground. Maybe he said something wrong. You got to be careful with those quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was away from the ball. Here's Powell twisting and turning to the 12. Tennessee leading 10-7, 2.56 to go second quarter, aided by penalties, penetrating the 15, and now close to the 10-yard line of Ole Miss. Tennessee is bound for the sugar, PBS. How about that? That was creative. Those East Tennessee people can be very creative. And there's a lot of discussion about uh, whether Tennessee is the best team in the SEC and all that jazz, as there is every year as the season winds down. It's funny that some teams, you play them every year and you beat them every year, and at the end of the year, they'd say, well, if we played you later on in the season, we'd have beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Second down seven, Tennessee from the 12, Francis. Touchdown, Tennessee. Tim Hendricks, number 89, the backup tight end. Penalty marker in the Tennessee backfield, so hold the celebration till we get the ruling. To the Tennessee backfield. Roughing the passer against Ole Miss, Tennessee counts. The touchdown will count. That was Francis' first touchdown pass. Did a nice job of staying with the tight end, Tim Hendricks, too, because he was covered early and worked his way to the outside, found a soft spot in his own the catch. That was only Hendricks' second touchdown catch. Point after good. Tennessee has taken a 17-7 lead. That's Jeff Francis impressive. Nice throw here. Reads the defense looking right down the middle at the weak safety. He's with the tight end. Looking at the tight end. The tight end breaks to the outside. It looked as though one of the Mississippi players was playing zone, was expecting help on the outside, and it was a random man call. Because when he broke to the outside, Bob, nobody went with him. Well, Hendricks very happy there, as you can see. He's from DeSoto, Texas. And once again, the two quarterback system pays off, see? <laughs> <laughs> Just like you predicted. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> it's always fun to predict after it happens, isn't it? Well, Tennessee on the road to the Sugar Bowl in their minds, and they have to beat Ole Miss today, and then they got to go up and play Kentucky. And we'll be bringing you that game next Saturday afternoon at noon Eastern time. The Volunteers of Tennessee and the Wildcats of Kentucky. I got to go Miss. This afternoon, Florida leading Kentucky 6-0. That's in the first quarter. That's down in Gainesville. Two field goals for Florida for that six-point score. And Wake Forest leading Georgia Tech 7-3 in the second quarter. Syracuse in front of Boston College, 14-0, second period. You know, one of the things that uh, is really discouraging as a defensive coach, your defense is playing well, and, you know, they've got uh, Torbush and Mickey Merritt and uh, Ron Case working on defense for uh, Mississippi, and then they come up and they just really whip themselves. They hand Tennessee... On, on silly emotional fouls they hand them 30 yards down the field and that's just that's just not intelligent play Tennessee brilliantly with an onside kick recovered Tennessee thanks to the fumble brilliantly called an onside kick Reves kicked it and recovered it Reves a running back linebacker in Miami in high school a real athlete and watch this just a perfect kick. You see the Mississippi man starting to retreat initially. Reves jumps on the ball. And those are chances that you can take when you have a defense that can play like Tennessee's defense. Because even if Mississippi gets the ball at the 34-yard line, they feel like they're in good shape. Everybody at Neyland Stadium expecting Reves to kick it into the seats after the penalty. And that came on the roughing the quarterback play on the touchdown pass. And as Tim was telling you how severe those penalties are, and Ole Miss just got them right down the field. Penalty markers down again. Look like Tennessee with a procedure call probably here. Tennessee leading 17-7. to They'd sure like to get some more points here. Illegal procedure, UT. You'll notice that often when Tennessee snaps the ball, their linemen are in, a, in what they call a two-point stance. Their hands are not on the ground. And they've got men off the ball that are in that same position behind them. Look at number 75, 76. They've got much better vision from that point, 
and they just set up like Galbraith. Look at Harry Galbraith setting up and, and stopping out, stabbing that defensive man before he has an opportunity to charge across the line. Skip Ellison, our producer, a real artist at work today with his replay selections. Here's Francis going for everything, but he throws it the wrong way. Closest man to the ball, really, was 35 Jeff Noblin. Either he threw it the wrong way or the intended receiver ran the wrong way. We're going to see uh, Timmy McGee working against Stevon Moore, and Moore does a nice job of coverage here. McGee sets up to go. Going to run by Moore. Moore jams him. Now the ball is already in the air. I think Francis is throwing it away at that point. Good job of coverage by Stevon Moore. So for the wide receivers, McGee and Clink Scales and Swanson, they've had to adjust to three quarterbacks this year. Tony Robinson, Daryl Dickey, now young Jeff Francis. This is second down 15, Tennessee, the ball at the 39-yard line. And a draw play, penalty markers down. Powell goes down after a gain of about four. Looks like the penalty may be going against Tennessee. 2.03 to go, second quarter. UT recovering the ball on the onside kick, holding is the call against the Volunteers. Recovering the ball on their onside kick, but unable to get anything going thus far on this drive. You know, earlier on when uh, Reves kicked a field goal, the fans uh, that elicited a little bit of a boo from the fans, and, and it's amazing how fans are always liberal in their play calling. You know, they always want, they want excitement, they want a lot of points. But if you look at the successful coaches, coaches that are successful throughout their careers, they're all conservative play callers. They're not... You know, they're not risk takers. You know, and a perfect example in the SEC is Vince Dooley, often criticized for kind of a boring offense, uh, but has had an illustrious career there at Georgia. And this afternoon, a very big ball game at 3.30, Georgia and Auburn, both possibly still in the hunt, certainly Georgia. That's picked off at the five-yard line. It was 27, Stevon Moore, McGee, the intended receiver, but Francis, once again, just throwing it the wrong way, apparently. Was it a wrong route, or was it a wrong pass? That's two times in a row this has happened, Tim. It might have been a read route, uh, Bob, where the where the man think if he thinks he's got him deep, that's an awful deep curl. You know, and it might have been a read route. If you can take it deep, take it. And I think Francis thought that McGee was going upfield with it. McGee decided he didn't have it deep. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. That's a long curl. <laughs> you got to have a gun to get it down there, I'll tell you. Now with a minute 44 to go in the half, the Tennessee fans cheering on their defense. That served the purpose of a good long punt, actually. Wansley diving out to about the eight-yard line. Hovannik with the tackle. You know, I, I don't know if, old, if I'm Ole Miss, I don't know if I want the ball at my own five with Tennessee's defense. Right, yeah, I hope the clock runs out. There's uh, what, Jeff Francis talking about it right now. Right. Coach, I didn't think we had hook at 35 yards in our game plan. <laughs> Or we used to do that at Mount Prospect, is what he's saying. Right. He's talking to Walt Harris up there, his, his mentor, his tutor. And as we said before, Walt does a great job. Second down, nine. Here comes Wansley breaking through for the first down to the 15, 16-yard line. The bossy A. Fisher with the tackle for Tennessee, number 40. And Billy Brewer on the wrong end for him of a 17-7 score. 104 to go in the first half. Billy Brewer, one of my favorite coaches, and you and I, Tim, have done more than 60 games in the last three and a half years, and we've met a lot of wonderful coaches, but Billy Brewer has a little something special about him. I enjoy always the work with him. It's always fun to watch a man work to try to recreate a tradition, and that's what he's trying to do. Osgood gives to Wansley. Number 59 is there. Oh, Mark Hovannik having himself an excellent day. He's from Yorktown, Virginia. Just a sophomore, too. That's his fourth tackle this afternoon. He's also an excellent pass rusher. I think he's got an opportunity to develop into as good alignment as they've ever had here at Tennessee. Because he, he makes those big overpowering plays. If you're a consistent player, you're never going to get a whole lot of press. But if you can come up with those big plays, then uh, people are going to hear about you. They're going to watch for you and notice you and write about you and talk about you. And you'll get on these teams. Oh, tough hit there. Only a couple of yards that time on the second down 11. It was Wansley hit this time by the nose guard 
Richard Brown. He was helped by Lavoisier Fisher. And the clock runs down to double zeros. And these two teams go in. Ole Miss to regroup in Tennessee to see if they can keep it going. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in Ole. Interesting and an exciting first half of play. Ole Miss might have been damaged as much by uh, penalty calls against them as um, maybe uh, Tennessee's offense in some cases, Tim. There's no question about it. I'm sure one of the things that Billy Brewer talked to the football team about at halftime is that just not beating yourself. Don't do stupid things that gives, donates yards to the other team. And, and that's what they did in that one drive. They, they lost 30 yards that uh, the Tennessee didn't have to earn that Mississippi just gave to them. Here's Carlos Reves ready to kick off for Tennessee. Number 24, Willie Goodlow is on the goal line for Ole Miss. And it's going to go out of bounds. Penalty marker will go down, and Tennessee will kick that ball again. First half statistics. You see one turnover for each team there. The Ole Miss Rebels try to keep the ball on the ground. Very ineffective throwing the ball. Only 33 yards. Tennessee, on the other hand, with 160 in the air and 202 total yards. That's a lot of air yardage against Ole Miss. Ole Miss leads the SEC in fewest yards allowed in the air coming into this game. We've had a couple of long completions, and Old Miss hasn't really tried to throw that, the ball that much. Uh, Chris Outgood rolling to the wide side of the field often with a run-pass option, and I'm sure that Brewer has instructed him not to take any chances. Don't throw it in any tight spots. If you, if you have a decision to make, just tuck it and go. Well, they move the ball back to the 35, and Reves will try to kick it off again. One thing that's really hurt Mississippi in the last several games is their special teams. It hurt them today, hurt them last week against Notre Dame, drop punt, drop punt, fumble against LSU. And of course, they, they lost 21 points in the kicking game against Georgia. Good low to the 24-yard line. And there Ole Miss will go on offense. Here's what happened in the first half with possession for Ole Miss. As you can see, they punted four times, and then the time ran out in the end of the second half after an Ole Miss interception. One excellent 75-yard drive for a touchdown with a key pass from Osgood to Sykes, and Sykes taking it in. So here comes freshman Chris Osgood, who they were trying to redshirt. He's only two out of seven for 33 yards passing the ball. From the 24, they're going to run it again. Here's Sykes. A little bit of yardage where there wasn't much offered to the 31-yard line. Sean Sykes from West Point, Mississippi, a redshirt freshman. Looks what they've they've decided to do, Bob, is they in the first half they tried to trap up the middle, but they'd approach the line of scrimmage and then get that lateral movement. And their offensive linemen are trying to position to the outside, including the tight end, trying to get position on the outside and get those backs outside. Here's Sykes again, showing some nifty feet. He got the first down and a little bit more. John Sykes out across the 40-yard line. First down, Ole Miss. And Sykes is running the ball very effectively here today. Kind of a makeshift line for Mississippi. You see number 59, Eric Sheehan, the first game he's played at guard, gets a nice block. They seal off the backside, Jay Schimmel, and that clears it upfield for Sykes. For Sykes, seven carries, 34 yards, one touchdown. And a big pass reception of 26 yards earlier that set up the touchdown. Here's Sykes again. Not this time. Nailed at the 40-yard line, and it was big Mark Hovannik who made his sixth tackle of the afternoon. Hovannik playing very well from the defensive right tackle position, working against Danny Hoskins or Jay Schemmel, whoever's playing in there at the time, on that Ole Miss offensive line. And Kelly Ziegler just a half step behind him, blitzing up inside as Ken Donahue, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, is known to do. This will be second. And just about 10. Quick toss over the middle. It's complete to 81. Mario Perry, the tight end. Gain of about six on the play. White with the tackle for Tennessee. Complete, they have pretty good field position here as they spot the ball at the 47 and a half yard line. This is a good read by Chris Osgood. He reads the blitz there. Perry reads it, turns to the inside. Osgood delivers the ball and a good catch by Perry as Chris White puts the shoulder pads on him. You get the feeling that this Ole Miss team needs a first down here. They need to maintain some ball control. This will be third down three. And when I say needs it, I mean to hang in this ball game. But here comes Tennessee. Paul Bannock, number 59. 
That's his first sack of the afternoon. A loss of 14. We told you he was an excellent pass rusher. The Tennessee, once again, opportunistic defensively. Looks like they're about to bend too much and then wham. Kramer will stand at his 25. Bill Smith at one punt block. Tennessee has 10 on the line now, dropping one man off. Bill Smith, that's where a pretty good punt. Kramer, right at his 25. That's five yards, about seven yards before he's tripped up. Andre Kramer with the quick feet, and he goes down. They'll spot the ball at the 33-yard line, and that's where the Tennessee Volunteers, leading 17-7, will take over. 42-yard punt, eight-yard return. So Daryl Dickey's back in at quarterback now. In the first half, Dickey was 6 out of 11 for 116 yards. Sharing time with freshman Jeff Francis. From the 33, here's Henderson. A 260-pound tailback gets a few out to about the 36-37. With Tennessee's 17-7 lead here, we might expect to see a very conservative Tennessee game here in the second half, relying on that defense and hoping to maintain some field positions, Tim. I think that's a game plan for the rest of the year, Bob. Yeah, and all the way through the Sugar Bowl. But the defense and the special teams produce the big plays that you need to win. Uh, throw a big one to McGee once in a while, and that's what you're going to see. That's what's happened in the first half. Second down, seven. Volunteers from the 37-yard line. Here comes Jeff Powell in a tailback. Now a little more speed than Henderson. Tries to get it to the outside, and he gets it to the 41 and knocked down there by Stevon Moore, number 27. There's Powell as a senior. He's from Nashville. They're having to play some backup players who don't get a lot of playing time in the backfield because Charles Wilson is out with a shoulder. Uh, freshman leading ground gainer Keith Davis is out with a shoulder injury. Davis is suited up, and uh, he could play if Tennessee needs him, but thus far, they have not with their 10-point lead. This is third down two volunteers from the 41. Here's Powell. Close to the first down. They have to bring the sticks in. Michael Portis, number 60, with the stop. Well, the rest of the Southeastern Conference sitting and watching Tennessee because Tennessee's in the driver's seat. They do not have a tie. As you look at Johnny Majors, he's not happy at all about the spot of the football. They spotted it considerably short of the first down and going to say it's fourth down. And he wasn't happy about that at all. Now he has a decision to make down there. As Daryl Dickey looks in. Here come the sticks. They're calling for a measurement. I was about to say, Georgia with 3-1-1 one, one record. LSU 3-1-1. One, one. Alabama 3-1-1. One, one. And Tennessee at 2-1. and one. So the rest of them are just going to have to sit and hope Tennessee loses. Or ties. <laughs> and uh, we would laugh. You can see it's short. About less than a yard. And Tennessee will punt it away with Garmin. You would laugh. But all three teams, Georgia, LSU, and Alabama with ties. And Auburn really isn't out of it yet. They've got two losses. If they can beat Georgia and Alabama and Mississippi State, State beats LSU and Tennessee loses a game, Auburn's right there. Which, you know, that's not that far-fetched. Absolutely not. Scenario. Matter of fact, this conference, one of the reasons these teams don't have the greatest records in the country this year out of the SEC is because they're beating each other. You don't know who's going to come up and get somebody. LSU's playing Mississippi State later today, tonight, in Baton Rouge. Good punt by Garmin. Ambrose at his 17. Good job of getting a little bit out of it. A penalty marker down about the 35-yard line. We'll check that out. Southern Miss is playing at Alabama this afternoon. Auburn at Georgia later today. Of course, very big game there. Kentucky's at Florida. We'll have these scores and updates for you, as you saw at halftime. We'll have them for you throughout the afternoon. And Virginia Tech's playing at Vanderbilt. Big news at Vanderbilt today is 40,000 people clipping against Ole Miss. 40,000 people are going to be playing kazoos at halftime to the tune of Elvira, hoping to set a new Guinness Book of World Records. I like that. Can we get a tape of that? <laughs> Can we send in somebody for that? I think that's being completely covered by the Superstation. And uh, <laughs> we're going to take time out here as they spot the penalty against Ole Miss. It's a tough one, too. Back to the 12-yard line. This is Turner Network Television. So they spot the ball back here just inside the 12-yard line and trailing 17-7, to 10-08 to go third quarter. That's where Ole Miss will take over. They're penalized thanks to a clipping call. Ole Miss with three wide receivers in the ball game. And they hand 
it off to Sykes. He runs it out here near the 15, short of the 15. And we're going to go to our studios in Atlanta for a college football update. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, Minnesota is getting abused by Michigan. The Wolverines have scored on every possession in the first half. Jim Harbaugh to Jamie Morris on a touchdown. A few minutes later, Michigan scored again. It is now 31 to nothing in favor of Michigan. So it's Michigan 31 nothing over Minnesota. Michigan still technically eligible for the Big Ten title, but Iowa would have to lose. Michigan with a tie with Illinois earlier. Not much on the second down seven. Hovannik is there again to stop Wansley. Mark Hovannik has just played himself a great ball game today. That's eight tackles, and he also has a sack. And he does it with style. He doesn't slide around to get in there. He runs over people and going to develop into a great player. Ole Miss had a lot of changes in their offensive line from last week's lineup today. Danny Hoskins started at left guard, and freshman Jay Schemmel, who had his first start against Notre Dame's on that side, too. They're the ones having trouble with Hovannik. Osgood hit from behind, fumbles the ball. Dale Jones applied the pressure. Still no signal as to who's got it. Osgood never saw him. It was a blind side hit. And Al Ford, the referee, is calling timeout. He's going to try to unpile it here to decide who has the ball. Ole Miss maintained possession. Osgood really took a shot. I think it's Dale Brown. Watch the left side of your screen here. The line blocking to the left, protecting. Brown comes all the way around from the strong side, all the way around the tight end to make the hit there. And Mississippi is lucky to get the football. Bang. Dale Brown consistently since his first game as a freshman. Excuse me, Dale Brown, what am I talking about? You're thinking of LSU basketball. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Dale Jones, been a superstar for Tennessee football. It's fourth down now, and mix up the line here. Tennessee jumped over offside down there. Darren Miller went over and made contact with Ole Miss. I think the call may go against Ole Miss. Oh, it's rough for the Rebels right now. Here they are at Neyland Stadium, 93,000 people in here today. Tennessee with their sights on the Sugar Bowl, and this is a tough enough place to play anyway. They move it back to the 11. Dead ball foul, ball start, offense, still forward. There's the young man under pressure today. Chris Osgood. He's probably clearing the cobwebs out after that Dale Jones hit. Got a little bit of carry on the punt. Didn't look that good. Kramer. Penalty markers are down everywhere, and Kramer goes down at the 48. Maybe a clip on the play. If so, that'll certainly help Ole Miss's cause, because they were going to be giving away some great field position to Tennessee. And Andre Kramer slow to get up. Let's see what happens to him. I think the clip, we uh, we went by the clip that occurred already. Kramer going down. He'd had a shoulder problem uh, earlier uh, before the Alabama game. And he might have injured that. To the 36-yard line goes the penalty. Clip on the run back. Got first down 10. And timeout. And we'll be back. Tennessee takes over possession of the football right after this. His uh, rib area. Hope that young man is all right. Defensive back plays on the left corner for Tennessee. They can sore lose afford to lose him on first down 10. Dickey remains a quarterback. Wide open the tight end, 81 Jeff Smith. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Dickey to Smith for 49 yards. Dickey up near 200 yards passing now. Looks like his own defense and just somebody didn't get back in there for Mississippi. I'm not sure who it was. Uh, they cleared out the weak side with the split end, so you don't see uh, Joe Nathan Shelley till the end of this play. He was hatting it up down the field with the wide receiver. And uh, it looked like one of the linebackers just did not get any depth at all. Got sucked in by the play action and didn't pick the tight, up end, tight end up coming across. They're checking on equipment for Dale Jones. I think he's all right. Here's handoff Henderson. To the 11-yard line goes 260-pound tailback Sam Henderson tripped up by Michael Fitzsimmons. 
Tennessee leading 17-7, 735 to go third quarter. The Volunteers hoping to taste some sugar in about a little over a month and a half from now. But they've got to beat Ole Miss, and they've got to beat Kentucky, and then they'll have to beat Vanderbilt. Kentucky's at Lexington. We'll have that game for you next week at noon Eastern time on our SEC Game of the Week. Henderson again, right side. Hammering away at a now tiring Ole Miss defensive unit. He's short of the first down to the seven goes Sam Henderson. Defensively, one of the things that you harp on uh, as a coach or a coordinator is to eliminate the big play. Make them drive the ball down the field line. Don't give them those long 30-yard uh, advances. And eliminate the mental mistakes. So that was not the nest. That was a nice throw by Dickey and a good catch by Smith, but it wasn't dramatic. It was just a mental error by the Mississippi defense that provided the, them the opportunity to move so rapidly down the field. Third down, two at the seven-yard line. Three tight ends in there, and actually three guards. Henderson's that big. Here's Powell, the tailback spot. First down, Tennessee, to the four-yard line of Ole Miss. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. Neal and Tim Foley with you. Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee. 6.23 to go. Third quarter, Tennessee 17, Ole Miss 7, and Tennessee knocking at the door just inside the five. Michael Portis is covering a lot of ground from that middle slot. Here comes Henderson near the two-yard line. Junior from South Bend, Indiana. I always wondered how... Johnny Majors got Henderson out of from underneath the doorstep of Notre Dame. Michael Portis with the tackle again for Ole Miss. Tennessee came into this game just a little bit more than a two touchdown favorite. They lead by 10 now. You wonder if a good high school athlete grows, grows up in a town like South Bend. Do they get sick of t hearing Notre Dame's name by the time they're ready to go to school? Do they want to get away from that type of thing? I'm, I don't know. Second down goal from the three. Henderson, touchdown, Tennessee! That's his second touchdown run of the day. He had a three-yard run and another three-yard run. Just power football. Point that 250 in the right direction and just follow it about the Chicago Bears using William Perry in the backfield. Everybody's been talking about that. Well, if you've got a fullback who weighs 260 and moving the tailback, you're accomplishing about the same thing. But can he dunk the ball over the goalpost? <laughs> <laughs> the question to his future. Uh, William Perry certainly can. Reveille. That point after is good, and his contact consecutive point after touchdown string just continues he's been perfect all year this is super football saturday on turner network television the tennessee leads 24 to 7 now on that scoring drive tennessee ran it five out of six times but the one time they did throw it was the 49 yard pass to tight end smith and uh, that was really the key play on the drive tennessee takes a 24 7 lead there you see these statistics consuming 228 if you remember correctly, the last time we were here in 1983, the play that Mississippi used over and over and over again was that play action dragged the tight end back across the weak side. Carlos Reves for the kickoff for Tennessee. The brother of Fuad Reves, who's with the Miami Dolphins now. In and out of the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line, and Ole Miss better try to get something going now. I think we're going to find out about... Osgood's throwing ability. He's three out of eight for 40 yards. Hasn't had much of an opportunity here. Remember that when Ken Austin got hurt, as Tim told you earlier, this is a pass-oriented team under Ken Austin. They brought in David McKinney. He really couldn't get the job done. Then young Mark Young, who's really a, a child, a freshman from Jacksonville, who couldn't quite get it done. And they unredshirted Chris Osgood last week against Notre Dame to see if they can find one here. Incomplete. Once again, Andre Rogers had an opportunity to catch it, but dropped the ball. He was hit by Chris White. Let's have a look at that Tennessee defensive secondary in action. 
Ron Zooks, the uh, defensive secondary coach for Tennessee, and just uh, does an excellent job. Tennessee probably does as good a job of disguising the defenses as any team in the country. They, they give you one look, and then by the time the ball snapped, they're someplace else. Well, this the Tennessee defense playing like some of the volunteer defenses of old since Ken Donahue came here from Alabama. You get a look at it right there. Dale Jones, his second sack. Lavoisier Fisher came right up the middle, number 40. In your picture, you saw 96 Tyrone Robinson, but there's the man, Dale Jones. A junior. He'll be back. Of course, Tim, as you hear it said so many times, you get a 24-7 lead, you know that Ole Miss is going to have to try to throw the ball, so they just lay their ears back and come on them. Right. Well, one of the thing, things that Chris Osgood is learning right now is, is go ahead and take your punishment, but don't keep going backwards. You know, if you're going to go down, go down there. Don't go down there minus 10. And, uh, you know, try to fight your way out and scramble. But that's if you see you don't have it, get down on the ground. Don't give up any more yardage. Three sacks for losses of 39 yards for Ole Miss in this game. Penalty marker down in the backfield. I think the 30-second clock may have wound down. It's, yes, delay of game against Ole Miss. Once again, Ole Miss just unable to uncrank it now under a lot of pressure here in Knoxville. And so much of the time, a young, inexperienced quarterback will get you in the wrong pass protection. Small foul, delay a game against the offense, half the distance, still third down. It's not a matter of someone missing a block. It's just you don't have enough people to block all the folks that are coming at you. What you have to do is change the play. If you don't change the play, throw it away. Third down, 26 from the Ole Miss three. Looked like somebody started earlier. No penalty flag. Out to the nine-yard line goes number 24, Willie Goodlow. Ole Miss trying really anything they can to get somebody in that backfield. Listen to the round of applause for the Tennessee defense. They've got a name the defense contest going on here in Knoxville. And among the suggestions for this defensive team, Majors Maulers, the Big Orange Wave, the Orange Crush, seems like I've heard that one somewhere before, Smokey's Bandits, and the one I like best, the Rocky Stops. Here's Bill Smith, of course, Rocky Top, the Tennessee fight song. They almost blocked it. They didn't, and there's going to be a penalty against the Volunteers. McGee Fair catches it at the 48. 43-yard punt. I think it was Brian Kimbrough who shot right up the middle at Bill Smith but missed the ball. Roughing the punter. Ole Miss stays alive here. This is going to be an interesting replay because I... How could he have missed the ball? I don't know. <laughs> I think he made contact... I think he made contact before the ball was hit. Let's see here. Okay, now the ball's not hit yet. Foul! The ball's away, and here he comes. Oh! That's freshman Brian Kimbrough from Dixon, Tennessee. Oh. Roughing the kicker against the defense. Automatic first down. Automatic first down to the 23. You know, it's hard to rough this kicker. He's 6'3", 220. He was, that's Bill Smith standing in the lobby of one of the hotels earlier this year, and head coach... Billy Brewer said, some guy walked up and said, if you're the punter, what do your linebackers look like? <laughs> so he took he took the hit all right. He's had one block, and that time got roughed up again. So he's having a rough time under this Tennessee pressure today. But that works into the favor of Ole Miss, and Osgood has him out of the hole now at the 23 on the first and 10. No pressure this time. It is he throws. Incomplete pass. It was, guess who? Number 54, Dale Jones. Watch Dale Jones work from the left of your screen. Nathan Wansley tries to pick him up. Try to get your head in the middle there, Nathan. Dale Jones throws him off to the side and grabs a hold of Osgood's arm as the ball is being released. He's the type of guy that makes things happen. He's a real catalyst for that defense. He's a real spark provider. How about that interception against the uh, in Alabama game? Here comes Goodlow. Gets back a few of those lost yards. He's down to about the, uh, let's see, the 27-yard line. Kelly Ziegler with the tackle. Late in the Alabama game, Mike Shula, who is one of the headiest quarterbacks I've seen in the nation, is about to throw a pass, and Dale Jones intercepts it from about four yards away. Yeah, Shula was throwing a screen pass out to the side, and Dale Jones went up in the air. Instead of blocking the ball, as most people would do, was able to make the catch. Probably the key play in that Alabama game defensively. Third down five from the 28th. Here comes Osgood, pressure again, just threw it away. 
Oh, Tennessee's really coming hard now, and it was Dale Jones pressuring the quarterback. Osgood running for his life. Trying to roll out to the weak side here. Jones is thinking containment. Keeps Wansley away from his feet. Pressures the passer. You know, you name four great linebackers in this league, and you think of Cornelius Bennett. You have to uh, think of Alonzo Johnson. Uh, Michael Brooks at LSU. And I think Dale Jones at Tennessee. I'd like to have those four playing on my football team. You have a pretty good team. Yeah. I don't think you can afford them, though. <laughs> Not now, but it, when they're out of this league. <laughs> Here's Tim McGee from the 23. <laughs> out to the 26-yard line. You know, two bad guys like Dale Jones and Cornelius Bennett don't ever get considered for the Heisman Trophy. The Heisman, I got my ballot in the mail just the other day. The Heisman voting, of course, everybody talking about it. And, and I think if Bo Jackson gets 100 yards today against the University of Georgia or has a good day somewhere in that neighborhood, I think you can lock up the ballots because I believe he'll sweep in to take the Heisman Trophy, Tim. I wish they could, uh, I wish they could put it off for a while. I, uh, because I think that uh, right now that the number one team in the nation, that all that rating is really up in the air. There's a lot of good teams in the country now that are awfully competitive, and the person that leads his team to a number one ranking really should get a lot of weight. Here's Jeff Powell around right in. It's open for the first down. Powell with some shifty feet. And he gets out here to the 45. Powell running a little bit like his old coach Johnny Majors used to run out the tailback in the single wing a 19 yard game johnny will like the look of this just kind of a, a counter trap and he's outside right now out around fitzsimmons and joe nathan shelley turns him back to the inside and another mississippi defensive back hit the turf and the pursuit finally got him but you know you talk well we'll talk about it in a second there's william howard with the ankle he will not return we understand William Howard had been starting a fullback for Tennessee today since they moved Henderson. Here comes Powell. He's running hard today, getting some good effective blocking, of course, too. Michael Fitzsimmons with the tackle. Tennessee's just going to keep hammering here. 157 to go in the third quarter. Balls 24, Mississippi 7. Yeah, I think that uh, Bo Jackson was a, uh, was a runaway leader in the Heisman. If you'd voted before the season started, he'd have won. And uh, had some real good games early against teams that weren't very strong. And, of course, he's got a an excellent uh, media staff there that, that supported his candidacy, David Housel. But I'm not sure that his play this year deserves the Heisman Trophy. Second down, six. Tennessee, check off at the line of scrimmage by Dickey. He gives it to the front man in the eye, and it's a first down. That's Henderson, who's moved back to fullback since Howard went out. And Henderson gets a first down. You say that, who do you think then is in the running? Long at Iowa, Bosco. I don't know that there's another running back who can challenge. Well, Defensive Lorenzo, players are just not going to get it. Lorenzo White's gained more yardage than Jackson, hasn't he? In the Big Ten? Yeah. And, uh, no publicity. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. You know, it's a big publicity campaign. It is. And it's just unfortunate that Jackson was injured in those two critical games. I read the only story I've seen all year. We see Dickey under pressure here on the first down. That was a lot of action. Great play for a five-yard gain. Jeff Powell, the safety valve, taking the toss from Dickey. The quarterback pressure from 38, Howard Moss. Watch him. He's the nickelback. He comes in on Dickey here. There he comes. Once, once again, they're trying to drag. You saw the tight end run through your screen there. They're trying to hit the tight end deep and across. A good job of coverage by Mississippi. Also a nice job by both the cornerbacks that uh, find themselves in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. As you look, look at Ron Zook talking to the Tennessee secondary. Second down five at the 40-yard line of Ole Miss. 59 seconds to go, third quarter. Here comes Powell again. Short of the first down, down to about the 37. Let's take a look at some of the scores. Wisconsin leading Ohio State. Oh, my. The Badgers have been beaten regularly by Ohio State in recent years. Kentucky in front of Florida. That's a third-quarter <laughs> score. We'll have Kentucky against Tennessee next week. I wonder if that Georgia game took a lot. George, Georgia Tech had trailed Wake Forest, coming back now, leading by seven in the third quarter. Virginia trailing North Carolina, 6-3, second quarter. <laughs> ah, the Wildcats. They're at their best when they're at their, when they're at their, their I think, most adversity. Yeah, right. They come off the mat well. <laughs> well said. 
I was talking about Lorenzo White as we were discussing that uh, Heisman Trophy. I was in Detroit recently, and I read a very large article, of course, as Detroit's Big Ten country on Lorenzo White. You see very little national media, uh, with the exception of the, the great job of publicity some people do when they gear up with a Heisman candidate, as you mentioned, as David Housel and the folks at Auburn, rightfully so, did at Auburn University. Of course, that business has changed a lot in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, but I don't remember anything like we see in the SEC at Georgia and, and Alabama and Auburn. It, they just do an excellent, excellent job of promoting their athletes. There's Smokey, the blue tick hound. He will be one of the few international athletes who won't compete in the Goodwill Games next July 5th through the 20th. As President Ronald Reagan said, as he discussed his meetings upcoming with the Soviet Union, I hope that we can settle our differences on the athletic field instead of the field of battle. And, of course, that's the whole idea behind Ted Turner's Goodwill Games. And they'll be next summer. 40, na uh, 40 nations at least will be participating, 18 different sports, including all your favorites, basketball, track and field, gymnastics, swimming, diving, etc. Looking forward to the coverage of that next summer from Moscow. It's third down two from the 37-yard line. Volunteers, conversion situation. Dickey. Great play. And the ball came loose, I believe. Yes. Would have been a great play. It was intended for Swanson. Great play defensively. Maybe that's, that's what you meant. That's what I you know that's what I meant. <laughs> I was by, thinking offense. No, uh-uh. They're running the slant. And this is, the ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. But look at Joe Nathan Shelley comes over the top. And, and Eric Swanson eventually breaks it up. Perfect position. This is a hard pattern to stop. He comes underneath. Shelley gets the jam. Now he's up over the top, tries to scoop it, and Swanson yanks it away. Swanson looked like he was in Manhattan's crosstown traffic trying to get to the airport at 5 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know how he feels. Penalty marker on the play. It's going to be against Tennessee, I believe. It was uh, Ben Morris who tipped the ball, by the way, for Ole Miss, number 90, playing a defensive left end there. I thought you were going to credit a wide receiver with no, a good play no, for a minute. No, I was shocked, no, Tim. No, no, no. Play the game against the offense. declined. Still got fourth down. All right, it's fourth down, and Tennessee has to give the ball up. You know, we're talking, with 19 seconds to go to the third quarter, we're talking here like Ole Miss is out of the game, and don't misunderstand me. 24-7 is the score, and we've seen bigger spreads that have closed up in the fourth quarter before. I'd hate to have to try to close that spread, though, against this Tennessee defense. Garmin, good with pooch punting. Let's see how he does here, if he can get it inside the 10. He does. Mark that now. Oh, what a great job by Bob Garmin. Only a 33-yard punt, but it's downed inside the five by Nate Middlebrooks. Let's go to Atlanta now for a college football update. Thank you, Bob. We showed you the 31. Here's the nothing. Final play of the first half. Minnesota trying to score. Allen Holt back to pass, but he is tackled. That's the end of the half. It's 31 to nothing. Well, the Wolverines seem to be marching uh, closer and closer to possession of the Little Brown Jug in their annual battle with Minnesota. As I mentioned before, Michigan, Ohio State, and Iowa all still in the battle for the Big Ten Championship. Iowa really in the driver's seat as Michigan has that tie with Illinois earlier. And last we heard, Ohio State was losing. We'll keep you updated on all the scores around the country when we return. The opening play of the fourth quarter, second down, seven, Ole Miss. Trenton, Tennessee, 24-7. Ball on the Ole Miss six-yard line. Quarterback draw, not enough. A few yards for Osgood out to about the 11 or 12-yard line. You know, we continue talking about the Heisman race here, which we will in a moment after I remind you that today's game is being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buick. Tim, we talked, you, you said maybe Bo Jackson might not be your first choice for Heisman, the candidate trophy candidate right now, winner. Uh, any suggestions? We said Chuck Long. I think Chuck, Chuck Long of Iowa. Uh, Four TD passes last week. Yeah, in, this, in this era of everybody jumping for the money, he passed it up in the state an extra year. Out to the 17-yard line goes Nathan Wansley, and Ole Miss converts for the first down, and they'll continue as they trail here 24-7 as they convert and continue possession of the football. How about Brian McClure, Bowling Green's quarterback? You know, he, he's 6'6", about 225 pounds, 
Johnny Majors would like to, Johnny Majors would like to have Brian McClure. <laughs> he was a runner-up for Heisman Trophy. Everybody thought he was going to win in 56, and guess who won it that year? The sports media coup of the century. Paul, where's my limo morning? <laughs> Here's Chris Osgood. As a man open, it is incomplete at the 23, juggled and dropped by Michael Smith, number 91. By the way, uh, yours truly, Tim Foley, and Mr. Practice, Practice, Practice Horning will be together on New Year's Eve, but we won't be at a party. We'll be at a football party for the All-American Bowl from Birmingham, Alabama, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. All-American Bowl scouts are here today checking out Tennessee. The volunteers were not to go to the Sugar Bowl. They would certainly be a candidate for that All-American Bowl. They also have scouts at the Air Force BYU game, Michigan, Minnesota, Auburn, Georgia, Southern Miss, Alabama, Tech Wake Forest game, the All-American Bowl people. Osgood under pressure. Can't find anybody either. Tim, as you get a wide view of this field down here, and from the from about the seven stories up press box we're in, you get a wide view. You can see that uh, Tennessee's all over these Ole Miss Rebels. Just doing a nice job of coverage. And what the best thing to do is, I think that Osgood, as you saw him deliver the ball, I think he was looking downfield, saw it wasn't there, and he almost just side-armed it into the dirt. We're up there in those, uh, those windows way atop the stadium here. We're so high, Air Foley has on his goggles and his helmet. <laughs> yeah, let's see. You don't fly your airplane much higher than this, do you? No. You can't follow the expressway if you get much higher. <laughs> on third down, 10. Osgood. Incomplete. Almost picked off. Tipped by 16 Tommy Sims. And then Charles Davis, number 22, dived for it but couldn't get it. Boy, that was now, Char look at dodging Charlie. a bullet. Watch Charlie here. Now, he is uh, he fin finished second in the voting for his class vice presidency here at Tennessee, and he was doing a little politic in here. <laughs> On the ground, Charlie tried. Now, his mother, excuse me. His mother's name is Hildred, and she doesn't like me calling him Charlie. His name is Charles, so I apologize for that uh, misrepresentation of your son's name. Charles. How about Chuck? Davis. Fourth down 10. Bill Smith in to punt again today. No pressure this time. Oh, can this man punt the ball? Strongest leg I've seen in years. And not much doing on the return. That was Tim McGee. Got it out to the 33-yard line. 55-yard punt, 5-yard return. This is Turner, Network Television. Well, this year, there's something different to say about Sylvania Superset. Really? 19-inch Sylvania Superset didn't be... The day is called Wear Your Orange Day, and they're giving away prizes for the most interesting orange-clad spectator. Don't see any winners there in that group. <laughs> Sorry, folks. First down 10 from the 34-yard line. Tennessee leading 24-7, 13-25 to go in the football game. Darrell Dickey has remained at quarterback. And he gives to Powell, who gets it out near the 40-yard line. Tennessee content now to just run this ball and eat up the clock. Let's look at some scores from college football action. Air Force in front of BYU, 14 to nothing. One of those teams could be in the Sugar Bowl. Texas leading TCU 3-0 in the first period. Number 20. And look at that. Florida has come back. 12-7, third quarter. That was Kerwin Bell to Frankie Neal. 45-yard TD for that uh, score for Florida. Dickey giving to Jeff Powell again. Jeff's having his entire career here. He has not played a lot for Tennessee. He's a senior. And today, playing in place of the injured Keith Davis, Jeff Powell's been the workhorse here in the second half. Uh, we were talking Heisman Trophy. Let's not just drop that. And Bo Jackson, clearly the front runner at this point. Uh, but uh, what about defensive players, Tim? Cornelius Bennett has had a great year for Alabama. Cornelius Bennett has. Uh, Michael Brooks isn't really hasn't been around long enough. Yeah, I haven't stayed up with the defensive players around the country. We get we get kind of locked into this league, and they've got some great players here. But I don't think anyone that would be in the running for that uh, vote. And you know, a defensive player is just not going to win it. Sam Henderson driving to the 49 for the first down, Tennessee. Tennessee has two all-stars. Speaking of good defensive players, one, of course, uh, all-star candidates is, has to be Dale Jones, who I, I think will be an all-conference linebacker. And Chris White, who wasn't even thought as a sure starter to begin the season, has come on and has six interceptions and has played very well. And there's Smokey, the blue tick hound, the Tennessee mascot, having himself just a wonderful afternoon. He's keeping the flies off our cameras. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of comments about the 
fly on the lens of the camera last week. We got that cleared off, though, this week. Here's Dickey. Plenty of time. He's going long, but Swanson pulled up short. Swanson couldn't get past his man, covering very closely on the play, Joe Nathan Shelley. And you speak about a good defensive player. Joe Nathan Shelley, the junior from Vicksburg, Mississippi, is, I think, an all-star candidate from Ole Miss at the cornerback position. I think he's got to be at least all SEC. He's broken up 14 passes this year. And that means that he breaks well on the ball and probably doesn't catch too well. Because <laughs> probably <laughs> some of those 14 should have been interceptions. But uh, they've had a hard time leaving him behind today. Played well all day long. And so often when you're a cornerback, you're playing well, you're not mentioned because all that happens is they don't throw your man the ball. Second down, 10 from the 49. Here comes Powell, twisting and turning, showing some quickness. 5'10", 170 pounds. Short of the first down, they'll spot it at the 46-yard line of Ole Miss, 44-yard line of Ole Miss. Look at his hole, though. Both linebackers, one linebacker blitzing in the long, wrong hole, it looked like. As Moss comes in to clean it up. 11-11 to go in the ball game. Tennessee 24, Ole Miss 7. Third down, three volunteers at the 44 of the Rebels. Ole Miss 1-3 and three in the conference. 3-5-1 three, and one on the season coming into this game. And of course, they were crippled badly by the loss of Ken Austin. Here's Henderson. Short of the first down. Bubba Dickey with the tackle, number 52. And Wesley Walls, another freshman. Ole Miss with some good freshmen, either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen on defense, like Lopez Jones and Rodney Lowe and Bubba Dickey and uh, Stevon Moore and Wesley Walls, Tim. I think that uh, what they're going to be looking for more than anything else in the uh, in the recruiting class is offensive linemen. And I think they need some help there. And there's, is that Wesley Walls? Is that number 80? That is Wesley Walls, who's being attended to by the Ole Miss trainers. Uh, let me take a moment here while we check out the injured player to remind you that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated is prohibited. Walls is okay and off the field, we're happy to report. We'll check to see just what the nature of that was. Looked like maybe he got hit in the Adam's apple. This will bring up uh, fourth down for Tennessee, fourth and two, and they're going to go for it. Again, relying on the defense, knowing that they're inside Ole Miss territory. Need to go to the 41 for the first down. And Dickey, as we've seen happen so many times by offensive teams, drew a freshman <laughs> offside as he changed that cadence count. Offside Ole Miss. That'll give Tennessee the first down. Zoom. Now they all outlawed that in the uh, NFL a little bit. They call that the head bob. And uh, I got a chance to play with the master of that Bob Greasy. He could get folks jumping all over the place, just changing the inflection in your voice. And it's really, it's difficult, but you have to discipline yourself as a defensive lineman. Watch the ball. That time he got one of his own guys. Old 71 Michael Fitzsimmons said, okay, you got us once. But now this time, I'm going to pop you if I'm going to jump off sides. I think Tennessee moved. Let's see what happened. Well, Fitzsimmons reached us across and knocked John Bruin about 15 yards, or was it Bruce <laughs> Wilkerson, one of them? I think somebody moved on the left side of the line for Tennessee out of the picture. They're calling it against. There you see. That's the guard. That's Bruin, I think, there. It moved back, or uh, Harry Galbraith. I couldn't see his number. But they're calling the penalty against Ole Miss. Coming under the ruling of when you're hot, you're hot. Got a dead ball foul, illegal procedure by the defense, hollering the cadence. And, and when you're not. <laughs> yeah, he moved They for, say, though, Tim, what was it? He said something about he the said defense. the defense calling the cadence. Aha, which is illegal. <laughs> First down and five now at the 34-yard line. Dickey, screen right side. Joey Clink scales, blazing speed. Too much traffic, though, and he goes down at the 20. First down, Tennessee flakes with a stop. Tennessee driving again, leading 24-7, 9.54 to go in this ballgame. 14-yard gain to Joey Clinkscales, who's playing here in his hometown of Knoxville. 
Wesley Walls, by the way, the Ole Miss defensive end who went out number 80, injured his neck, but he will be back in the ball game, so he is okay. We're happy to report. Number 18, Troy Hale in the game for Tennessee now on a first down 10 at the 20 of Ole Miss, just outside the 20. Dickey with the audible. Everybody audible. <laughs> Ole Miss calling an audible. Ole Miss won the audible that time as Powell gets only about a yard Bubba Dickey, Bubba Dickey with the tackle. You know, earlier in the uh, game, you wondered about the play of Jeff Francis. Uh, why insert him at that point? I'm more curious about why they're not inserting him now if they want to get him some playing time. It, it would seem stranger that he's not playing. With, that basically, this game has, has been decided. I would say that it's far from uh, being over, but it's, in essence, over. Why not get Jeff Francis in there and let him take some snaps, direct some drives? Well, we'll have Tennessee playing Kentucky next week on our game of the week. Here's the throw into the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for McGee, covered by Stevon Moore. Uh, we'll have a chance to talk to Johnny Majors about that and just why he is playing with the two quarterbacks. We were not aware he was going to, even though we chatted with him about Daryl Dickey today. We do know that Francis had played a little bit against Rutgers uh, about a ten, round 10 minutes or so before now, Jeff Francis. So we were a little surprised when he came in as early as he did. That's a, a war every year between Tennessee and Kentucky. Of course, everybody. You, know, you talk about rivalries in the SEC. Well, pick a matchup. It's a rivalry. That's right. Third down nine from the 19. Tennessee in that passing set. Pass protection set, as you can see. Dickey into the end zone. McGee. Touchdown. McGee's first touchdown catch today, and that gives him 117 yards on seven catches. Joe Nathan Shelley in good shape here, running, running right with McGee. Get your head around. Good position. If he'd have got his head around, he might have had, a, had an interception. Too often, the defensive back gets locked in on the receiver instead of locating the football, and that's what happened there. And again, McGee, good con concentration on the ball, ball brings in a... Another six points for Tennessee. Here's Rebaez hoping to keep his consecutive PAT streak alive and does. And Tennessee leads 31 to 7 with 8.44 to go in this football game. In front of a very happy crowd. And there's a young man we're sorry to see not playing, but I'm sure he's happy. Tony Robinson, Tennessee's injured quarterback. 33 yard line in the entire second half. And they're starting in the hole again at the 12. This volunteer team is fired up. There's Tim McGee, who has 117 yards, one touchdown catch today, four on the year. And Tim McGee says, give me a little pub here. Get out of my way. I caught a TD pass. <laughs> Hear him out. He's an outstanding young man. Tim and I, you, you and I spent some time with uh, McGee and with Tony Robinson at the SEC football meetings in Birmingham before the season started. And they're personable and interesting young men. Very, very art articulate. Here's Osgood. As a man open, overthrows J.R. Ambrose at the 20-yard line. And speaking of good receivers, Ambrose doesn't have many catches today. Here's some uh, scores. Virginia, 10-6, leading North Carolina at the half. Michigan State in front of Northwestern, 13-0. All-American Bowl people at that Michigan State game. Duke leading North Carolina State, 24-3. They just said that uh, Tom Reed, by the way, will be back for North Carolina State. Virginia Tech in front of Vanderbilt. Second quarter score in Nashville. Second down 10. Osgood. Incomplete intended for Sykes. He was open, just couldn't hold on to it. At practice yesterday, I was listening to a couple of players talking. Charles Davis is... You know, what would you expect them to be talking about? I mean, they're in the run for the SEC championship. They're going to... The, looks like they may have a chance to go to the Sugar Bowl. Of course, they have a chance. Maybe they were talking about the fraternity formal. No, no, he's talking about Reagan and and in the uh, summit meetings coming up. And Gorbachev. In, in, in Gorbachev in Geneva. And I think, oh, a football player. Yeah. That's how the game has changed since you played, Tim. That's right. <laughs> Osgood. Oh, it's oh. Picked off. That's Chris White, his seventh interception. White down to the nine. Fumble. Fumble the ball there. And it's Ole Miss ball. Ole Miss gets it right back. 
Watch this. With He'll hear about this. Older. He'll hear about this. Now, I told you that all defensive backs, six of Tennessee's defensive backs used to be quarterbacks. A couple of them used to be receivers. Maybe Chris was a running back. Great play on the football. Now, watch how he's carrying the ball. Look at this. Now, that's not how you're supposed to carry the ball, Chris. And I think who comes in? J.R.? I believe it's J.R. Ambrose comes in, knocks the ball out, and now we got to line up and play again. So, there's your giveaway takeaway. That's even for Tennessee on that play. Osgood rolling out of the pocket over the middle. It's complete to Andre Rogers. Close to the first down. About nine yards to the 17-yard line, DeLong with the tackle. J.R. Ambrose has no catches, but he has one of the good tackles in this game. Watch number six. Looks good. It looks good when you're carrying the ball like that. That's slick looking. That's definitely GQ. But <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> if you get hit from the back, it comes out. It becomes DQ. Right. As yeah. in disqualified. <laughs> oh, boy. So it'll be second down and about a half a yard here for Ole Miss. This game is history in terms of winning and losing. Tennessee 31, Mississippi 7. And the Volunteers continue their quest for the Sugar Bowl. If they continue to win, Tennessee will go to the Sugar Bowl. It's close to the first down. I believe Ole Miss got it. There's Tony Robinson, and we saw before we took a commercial break just a few minutes ago, you can see the popularity of that young man. So he says, it's hard for me to sign an autograph with these crutches. <laughs> right, that's what you need to do, Tony. Start signing autographs on the stairs. Don't do that. <laughs> no, that's a good decision. You're showing a lot of wisdom there. Tony Robinson, I, you know, you talk about Heisman Trophy. Had he kept playing the way he was playing when he went down against Alabama, that young man right there could have been a, a, a definite candidate for the Heisman Trophy. No question about it. I mean, he, from what Carl Torbush uh, said, there wasn't a defensive coordinator in the league that wasn't you know, intimidated by his presence. Good low of the intended receiver, the incomplete pass. It'll bring up second down 10 from the 18-yard line for Ole Miss. And Chris Osgood, who's an outstanding athlete, highly recruited out of Moss Point, Mississippi High School, who was going to be redshirted by Billy Brewer. But Billy said he, you know, he knows he's got to find a quarterback, and he thought it would be good to get this youngster some seasoning now. I think so, and especially with the offensive line and the condition that it's in, you want a mobile guy. Well, there's a big hole for the first down run out across the 31-yard line by Willie Goodlow who's really about the fourth team tailback. He returns kicks and punts, but rarely plays out of the backfield. But remember, Chuck Cleveland's got a sore ankle. Sean Sykes started at tailback and played most of the way. Wansley moved to fullback today, so Goodlow is called into action. First down, Ole Miss. 6.33 to go in this ballgame. Next week, Tennessee at Lexington on our TNT presentation of Southeastern Conference football. As we'll follow Tennessee in their quest for the Sugar Bowl. Osgood picked off again. And who is it but number seven, Chris White, now with eight interceptions on the year. And he's down at the 25, doesn't fumble. Lavoisier Fisher came up the middle to apply the pressure, but watch Chris White, number seven. Watch this, settling back in there, kind of in the robber position, settles down, boom. Looked like uh, Osgood expected Ambrose to break it to the inside, and look at how White's carrying the ball now. <laughs> I think he heard you. Right, the nose is tucked up inside there. Once is enough. Good, you're showing some wisdom, Chris. You learn fast. That's great. Now we have Jeff Francis in at quarterback for UT, the redshirt freshman from Mount Prospect, Illinois, on first down. And Tennessee just running it off the right side. That's Pete Panuska, tackled by 95 Arthur Scott. Clock down to 6.07 and counting. Tennessee leading 31 to 7. Isn't it interesting? Last week at Vanderbilt, we saw John Gromos from a Chicago suburb. And now, this week, we're seeing Jeff Francis, quarterback at Tennessee from the suburb of Chicago. This will be second down seven. They spot it just outside the 22-yard line. Tennessee a little confused here with the play call. doesn't matter though they're just going to run it with Panusco who gets it to the 20 maybe inside the 20 Rodney Lowe the freshman from Pompano Beach Florida making the stop for Ole Miss we were talking about Ole Miss earlier you said you thought that their recruiting needs centered mainly on offensive line I would have to agree with you on that Tim and I'm sure that's what uh, Billy Brewer is looking for I think so any team that's doing that much shifting in the offensive line this late in the year 
you know, it has to indicate some uh, that they're not happy with some performances down there. Third down five. Volunteers at the 20 of Ole Miss. 4.55 remaining in the game. Here goes Panuska as penalty markers go down. Panuska to about the 19. Tennessee bidding for its first SEC championship since 1969. That year, the Volunteers' lone loss during the regular season was to Ole Miss. Tennessee was unbeaten and ranked third in the country. But Archie Manning beat the Volunteers 38 to nothing in Jackson. The Sugar Bowl then invited Ole Miss to that bowl. Tennessee went to the Gator Bowl. The following year, though, Tennessee went to the Sugar Bowl and made the most of it. They beat Air Force 34-13 on the first day of 1971. Starting to rain here, too. It's going to be fourth down, and Tennessee puts Reves on the field at the 26, so it'll be a 36-yard field goal attempt for Carlos Reves. He's tied with Bo Jackson for the leading scoring. He averages 8.7 points per game. And he hooked that one in there just like Tim Foley's five-iron shot. And Reves with his second field goal of the day. Tennessee 34, Ole Miss 7. 419 remaining in the game. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network. And it is Tennessee 34 and Ole Miss 7 with 419 to go in this ball game. There's Willie Goodlow to take the kickoff. They're holding it. The ball kept rolling over down there. Reves kicking it without a tee, and that's to keep it on the ground, as you can see. Takes a tough hop. Goodlow with trouble at the goal line. And out to about the 17 or 18-yard line comes Willie Goodlow. And there Ole Miss will attempt to move the ball again, trailing now 34 to 7. And Ohio State takes the lead over Wisconsin by a slim margin at halftime, 7-6. And Kentucky leading Florida, 13-12 in the fourth quarter. And, Tim, I know that didn't surprise you a lot because of a feeling you have about Florida and last week's loss. We'll come back to that. North Carolina leading Virginia. That's third quarter score. Army over Memphis State, 21-0. Army probably headed to a bowl of some nature this year. And what was your point about Florida? the point about Florida is the one thing that they had to play for this year was uh, a national rating and number one rating in the AP poll and that slipped away last week I'm sure that uh, they're suffering the emotional effects of that today there's, there's Mark Young who's inserted in at quarterback for Ole Miss as Chris Osgood could not get it done today and another freshman Mark Young whom we saw play against LSU a couple of weeks ago a freshman from Jacksonville Florida who's thrown for one TD 14 out of 35 but it was thrown four interceptions coming into today's game gets a little playing time it will be second down two from the 26 yard line Ole Miss trailing 34 to 7 Tennessee just hammered Ole Miss today about every way you can think of incomplete and it'll bring up third down and two like to take this opportunity to thank Alex Vergara our statistician Kim Anderson, our spotter, Nikki Nichols, our booth manager, and they'll all be with us in Lexington, Kentucky next Saturday, another one of our favorite places to visit. One of the great joys of doing Southeastern Conference football is visiting these beautiful parts of the country. The volunteers will go up there to try to continue their quest for the Sugar Bowl. Kentucky leading Florida right now at Gainesville. The Wildcats will be really crazy if they beat Florida and ready for Tennessee. They'd love to ambush both of them, wouldn't they? That's definitely correct, and uh, whether, regardless of the outcome in Gainesville, you can bet they're going to be be ready to defend their honor up in Lexington. I know they've been embarrassed uh, with their performance in a couple of games this year, and what they're trying to do, I think, is salvage their pride this season. And, uh, of course, Claiborne is a, a fellow that coaches with a lot of pride, trying to get his team up and finish, finish strong. Kentucky 1-3 and three in the SEC. They are 5-4 and four on the year. Now, if Kentucky were to beat Florida, were to beat Tennessee, and finish up the season 7-4, and four, you can see Kentucky in a bowl game. That's for sure. We might even be looking at them in Birmingham at the All-American Bowl if they were to be able to pull off those two big upsets. I, I would think that a, a, a bowl would always like a Kentucky around. They bring a lot of people. They've got a lot of spirit. So most people thought the bowl hopes of Kentucky died in Nashville when Vanderbilt beat them last week. But I do think that if they were to end the season 7-4, and four, Kentucky would have a good opportunity for one of the bowls. Of course, they've got to hold on to them. <laughs> We've given them the victory. I guess the moral victory won't really count in the standings. They are leading Florida 
in the second half, 13-12 at game. It's fourth down, inches. Ole Miss going to go for it. Mark Young checking off at the line of scrimmage. 25 second clock runs down to two seconds, and he gives it to the freshman tailback Chuck Cleveland, who came into the ball game two or three plays ago, tackled by Mike Whitehead. Cleveland's a freshman from Westchester, Ohio, that they really like at Ole Miss. He's a big, long, tall drink of water, long strider, has a 4640. There he is, number 33. He's 6'2, 200 pounds. I think one of the most important things as you look at that Alabama leading Southern Mississippi score for a running back to have is quick feet, the ability to change direction. Kansas leading Nebraska. Look out. It's early. First quarter. Here's Mark Young. It's complete. Andre Rogers. No, that's Ricky Myers. Ricky Myers to the 27-yard line. Myers, the junior from Bassfield, Mississippi, gets it way down here inside Tennessee territory. Longest gain of the day for Ole Miss, and the first time in this half they've penetrated Tennessee territory. Watch Young set up here. Does it, gets back there, sets his feet, looking downfield. The ball is in the air. Now the receiver makes his move, comes inside underneath Terry Brown. Good timing. Good play. Charlie Davis, Charles Davis, hustles over and makes the stop. Ricky Myers, J.R. Ambrose. Ambrose without one single reception for Ole Miss today. First and 10, Tennessee 28-yard line, 2.13 remaining in this ballgame. Mark Young, freshman quarterback, in the pocket. He completes another one, this time to tight end Michael Smith. And Smith, the uh, yard or show, or just barely short of the first down. He may even be, be at the first down marker. Clock running down inside two minutes remaining in this game at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. It's starting to rain here now, and a lot of the folks are leaving Neyland Stadium. We had 93,000 in here earlier. They're going to complete this circle, and nobody's quite sure how many people it's going to hold then. They say you can pack in 100,000 in the stadium now if you jam everybody in and standing room only them. And of course, they'd like to pass up the University of Michigan and become the largest stadium in the country. They're second largest now. Young has a man in the end zone. It's Ambrose. Touchdown Ole Miss. His first catch of the day is a touchdown pass for J.R. Ambrose of 19 yards from young Mark Young. Too little, too late. Yeah, it's going to be interesting at Mississippi for the next couple of years. Mark Young, as he as he ages, he's going to put uh, he'll put more pounds on. He's kind of slender right now, but by the time he gets out of Mississippi, I bet he weighs 20 more pounds than he weighs now. It's going to be a, a good battle between he and Chris Osgood, and uh, Mississippi's going to have some power on offense. And Brian Owen with the point after touchdown, and it is now 34-14 with a minute 27 to go. That point after kicked by freshman Brian Owen. He hadn't kicked a field goal, even attempted one, in three games. We'll be right back. Excuse me. Any Let's look at it again. J.R. Ambrose, who had no catches against Notre Dame and no catches in this game today till right now. Good job of protection by the Mississippi front. Just a matter of getting more depth. Ambrose plays the ball, and as McGee did, we'll see it uh, in an isolation here, as McGee did so well. He's got uh, McDaniels beat, but he walls him off with his body and uh, makes a fine catch with the hands. So many receivers will let that ball come into their body and give the defender a chance to bat it away. Ambrose, with his arms and hands out away from his body, made the catch. going to be an onside kick attempt here by Ole Miss. Bounced right into the hands of Tennessee's wide receiver Troy Hale, number 18. Make that 16, Tommy Sims. Sims with the catch of the onside kick attempt, and Tennessee will take it there with a minute 26 to go in the game, leading 34 to 14. There's the Rebels scoring drive. Seven plays, 81 yards, 252, and young uh, Mark Young uh, looked impressive there. Remember, though, that Tennessee playing a lot of substitutes now as this game is well in hand and Tennessee brings in their third quarterback of the day it is Greg Hargis number 17 he is a freshman from Dalton Georgia Greg has played a little bit also for the volunteers but just only a few snaps Jim Miller running the ball uh, check that Greg Hargis has thrown no passes for the volunteers there's the youngster from Dalton Georgia Probably won't get his first one in today either. I doubt that Johnny will let him throw a long one. <laughs> Minute two remaining, clock counting down. Ole Miss will be happy to get out of here. Ole Miss has to go play in the Egg Bowl in Jackson, Mississippi against Mississippi State in that annual war next Saturday. 
that game, no matter the record of these two teams, is always a battle. Hargis letting the clock run down. Giving it to tailback Jim Miller, who just popped it through there, and he's to the 35-yard line. Uh, excuse me, that was not Miller. That was Pete Panuska who took it. The tailback. Panuska popped it in there behind the block of Jim Miller. 14-yard game for Panuska. Clock down to 33, 32 and counting. Uh, the 25-second clock is less than that, so Tennessee will have to get off the play, but this will be the last one. Tennessee continues their quest for the Sugar Bowl. And that'll be the last play of the ball game, Panuska. And the Tennessee Volunteer fans who have stayed here in the rain to watch Tennessee hold on to their 34-14 win over the Rebels of Ole Miss. And the Volunteers now go to 3-1 and one in the SEC and 6-1-2 and two on the year. There's Majors and Billy Brewer. We'll be back in just a moment at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Ole Miss losing to Tennessee, 34-14. to 14. Give me a light. No, 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 no. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light. And previews along with other scores coming up on the Redman Action Report. But now let's go back to Bob Neal and Tim Fuller. Tennessee beats Ole Miss 34-14. Six of those 34 points came when Tim McGee caught a touchdown pass in this game. He's number two in receptions and yardage for the University of Tennessee all-time list now. And the man that Johnny Majors, who's coached some great ones, says is the best I've ever coached. And uh, Tim McGee, very high compliment from Johnny Majors. Congratulations on your game today. And first of all, uh, what are your thoughts now about the quest for the Sugar Bowl as you get this victory over Ole Miss? Well, it was a great win, and we did some things. We went out executed, and we played as a team, offensively, defensively. Our defense gave us some good posi field position, and our offense just took the opportunity and scored on it. And for the Sugar Bowl, we're taking it one at a time, and we had Ole Miss today, and now we got Kentucky. We have to look forward to it because it'll always be a tough game, and we know Kentucky going to play us because it's like a state rivalry. But we got to go out and execute well. Today you passed up Anthony Hancock in receptions and total yardage. Uh, did you break his records in high school, too? You guys went to the same high school, didn't you? Yeah, we went to the same high school. I broke his rec records, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think he's a great athlete. and it's, it's, it's really great to break someone like Hancock's record. And just to be up there in the top of the Tennessee receiver is saying something really great. Who, uh, who do you think is the toughest uh, defensive back to work against in the SEC? Well, I think it's definitely Arthur Johnson from Auburn. He played me real tough when he came up here. I think he was the only one. They, they really played me man-to-man -man most of the game, and they've really been double covering So he did a great job, and I, I really think he's the best in the SEC. Now, how, did you catch a couple of touchdown passes in that game? Yeah, I caught one I caught one against him, but it was a it was a hard fall battle between me and him, and I'm just lucky I got that one, and I, I think we came out 50-50 on the deal. What happened on that play late in the first quarter? It looked like you ran about a 35-yard hook. Was that just a was that a read route? Yeah. Uh, the quarterback, uh, they run the play in, and the quarterback got and told me to run a 25-yard curl route, and he thought I was running the takeoff route, and he threw the takeoff, and, you know, it was a miscommunication on his part in the sideline, and I did exactly what they told me to do. <laughs> you, you'd never go too far wrong doing that, right? Uh, that's right. <laughs> well, you certainly ran the right route on your touchdown catch. Let's look at that uh, along with you, Tim, and tell us about this uh, catch from Daryl Dick. Well, we were expecting a blitz, blitz coming from the secondary, and when he came, we were going to just run by the guy, and... Unfortunately, Darrell put it up well, and he didn't look back, and there was the catch, and it was just a great, I think it was a great throw on Darrell's part, and execution well. Uh, what about the quarterback situation? Of course, your friend Tony Robinson went down, and Tennessee was hurt by that. Dickey came in here and has played quite well. And then today, we surprised a little bit to see Jeff Francis come in. Uh, what's going on with the quarterback situation? Why the two quarterbacks? Well, I think they gave him Jeff Francis some experience for next year. Darrell kind of hurt his leg in the midway through the second quarter, so they had to play Jeff right then to Darrell got well. And I think it's really good for our part because we're not really relying on one quarterback, and when there's two quarterbacks can do the job, I think we can get the feel for both of them. One final question, Tim McGee. We're going to televise your game next week in Lexington as, as Tennessee becomes America's team for a couple of weeks here, <laughs> maybe even three to follow your, your aim for the Sugar Bowl. Uh, what do you have to do, and just one short answer here if you can, offensively to beat that, that very tough Kentucky eight-man front defensive football team? We're going to have to out physical them. They come in every game, every year, and they try to out physical us. So we're going to have to out physical them and execute well. You know, the last hurt, last we heard in the third quarter, Kentucky was leading Florida 13-12 down in Gainesville. Well, I hope they win. 
Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next week in Lexington. All right, thank you. Congratulations to Tim McGee. Becomes the number two all-time career leader in receptions and yardage at the University of Tennessee, passing Anthony Hancock today. He had a touchdown reception, and the Tennessee Volunteers beat Ole Miss 34-14. to And as we say, next week we will be in Lexington, Kentucky, as the Volunteers meet the Wildcats. And, of course, right after this, we'll update you on the latest on the Kentucky-Florida score. Today's game has been brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. And by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. And by the United States Armed Forces, a great place to start.